If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell icon to get the latest updates. Okay, so uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jay. So I'll have a brief intro about me. Like I have around 14 years of experience and doing this corporate training from last uh, seven to eight years. And I'm a core supply chain professional uh, working on the digital transformation projects in multiple areas. And I'm providing this Ariva training on upstream, downstream related implementation related training for all the corporate clients and other some uh, institute based individual uh, contacts also. Okay, so that's a brief about me. And uh, <clears throat> so if I like, so uh, I just want to like uh, first I have whenever I had a discussion earlier. So the requirement was to have a, a little idea from a supply chain perspective. That was kind of a little prerequisite was there. It was not mandatory, but I was uh, expecting like because this Ariba tool is more on a supply chain perspective. So the major content that we'll be covering is uh, from the perspective of is from the core supply chain side as it assists the supply chain process of any company from the digital transformation perspective, or you can say like on a uh, digital platform perspective. So that was my request. So I hope uh, a brief about that one have already, everyone would have been gone through if you are new on that platform, but that is my expectation a little bit on that side. So no shoes, like, let's let's start with this one. Any Anyone have any upfront questions, like any doubts, any questions on upfront? Anything on the Ariba side? So SAP Ariba introduction. So this is a, these are the modules that we will be covering up. Okay, the sequencing little uh, that one. So module one, we will be starting with the SAP Ariba introduction, and uh, module two is SL, uh, SLP supply life cycle and performance. Then module three is for Ariba sourcing. Four is contract. Uh, five is downstream, and we have Ariba guided buying overview. It will be an overview. Then we have reporting integration overview, admin and core admin. So, and the 10th is like it came on the top a little bit. So here is the Ariba supply network. So these are the 10 topics that we will be covering up in our entire training session in here. Okay. So um, uh, let me start with the first one. Okay. SAP Ariba introduction. I'm just opening this one. Okay. So, yeah. So, okay. So as I mentioned, right. So if we talk about SAP, the basic of SAP Ariba, if I say, right. So, Ariba was initially a separate organization. SAP acquired it somewhere in the 2012. Okay. And uh, then onwards, SAP is selling like SAP Ariba to all the customers. Okay. So here, when we say this SAP Ariba, so these are some disclaimers that uh, we, we, we need to follow. Everyone needs to follow on this one. Okay. This presentation and all. So I hope like everyone will be having access for the LMS also. You can go through with these uh, disclaimers. This is the one. And this will be the our agenda of this one, right? Introduction, architecture, Ariba key benefits. So these are the things we will be covering up in our today's agenda. Okay. So here, if I go for this, so as a introduction, like uh, so, these things are there in this one. Like I just give you a brief about this Ariba, right? It's a cloud-based tool. So when we say the cloud-based, so like everything you are listening nowadays, right? It's an everything on online cloud-based, all these things, right? So the basically the of uh, the uh, objective of cloud based or the what is the benefits of the cloud based is that you can access the platform either it's an Ariba or any other cloud platform that you do not generally require any physical requirement for that like if you use an ERP system you need to have some servers installed in your premises the same thing is not required when you are working on any cloud tool like you just need a simple URL like you open your Gmail like that way and you can access it on any laptop anywhere in the world and the same data get it there. The basic ideology is this one that the data centers, the data where the data is getting fetched, right? Everything is being stored and maintained and monitored by the host, host like the SAP Ariba itself. So SAP Ariba has multiple data centers across the world. Like if I give you an example for India region, I think there is a data, uh, data center in Mumbai. And for Asia region, they have a data center in Singapore also. Same way some data centers are located in Europe. So these are some data centers which are providing us this data. So whatever we are putting up the data on the Ariba platform and all. So this data is goes into the these servers. So these guys maintain that servers uh, health and everything. So this is how this cloud platform works. So everything will be on those servers. You access it anywhere in the world. It will help you out to fetch the data easily. Okay. So this is more on this perspective. 
if you say like it improves all vendor management system and all so ariba so basic of supply chain whenever you are want to buy something you need one side is a one like you need a supplier and a buyer very basic very simple when you want to buy something someone needs to provide right so buyer and supplier relationship so that is the main objective that the vendors all the vendors which will be associated on this ariba will be easy to access and it will be low cost for them also even the basic access of ariba platform from supplier perspective is free for the suppliers so this is uh, a little bit you can say a little advantage for the supplier perspective that they do not need to pay something upfront for having a basic access of sap ariba from a supplier perspective okay then you can see this sap ariba is a digital transformation tool so digital transformation like generally nowadays as you know right people are looking for something to be automated digital transformation you can easily access the data <coughs> sorry okay so from that perspective this for uh, this tool helps you a lot a lot of things happens in the real time like if you are for example if i give an ex little example of if you are performing an rf request for proposal okay you are asking supplier some quotation supplier provides you that quotation so this data flow will be on a real time basis if you take an example in a orthodox method generally what we do is as a supply chain process we generally draft a email or we send it through some different different communication channels and we send it this information to the supplier that we need a quotation and supplier revert on it okay and it might take some time when he send it it will be hard hard copy or it will be coming in email or something like that right but in ariba this data is gathered immediately updated in the format that you require so we'll be covering those things in here i will be showing you in very detail that thing okay so this is like benefit of it that the data is flows real time and it's easy to like uh, like collect the data from the supplier and uh, which is a very specific what you require okay so this is the another features like it's a b2b solution business to business like you are a business partner in sap ariba so business to business b2b solution and it's the world's largest so as you already know like sap is uh, already and it's a market leader like most of the companies are using the sap uh, systems either it's a ecc systems or hana and all different different systems right so from that perspective it's a little bit you can say a good uh, you can say the trust is there that sap is performing something and something up to the mark so that is why the b2b solution is more uh, sap ariba is more uh, preferred in the market connect with the right suppliers <clears throat> visibility vendors can get the information easily on this one okay then we have an ariba network so ariba network is basically you can say like everything on kind of non ariba network it's like if i give you an example like if you are having a mobile you are calling someone so you are calling with i either it's airtel network or idea network vodafone right that way so same way ariba network is kind of that thing that they are managing this network on its own and every documentation flow and everything happens via ariba network okay so i will be showing you that also like how these things works in there okay now sap ariba network removes all complexity so if you see right once i will be showing you the tool here you will see that it's like little easy to understand because a lot of things has been configured on the user interface perspective okay like easy to user to understand the uh, the dashboards the process the thing how to do and all so just a click and all and lot of things are self explanatory on the dashboard itself so they have designed in a manner it's little easy to understand of that part. okay so like you can see this like you can if required you can integrate it with the other systems also so sap ariba can uh, supports that integration with hana so obviously like ecc all these systems are quite easy to integrate so when it comes from the integration perspective but you can also integrate the system with other systems also like other erp system apart from the sap via the middleware system so we integrate here the master and the transitional data so i will be showing you what is a master data what is a transitional data all those things will be shown into the system in here so this is yeah base, hi, but, yeah uh, yes yeah, okay. Okay. Sorry to interrupt, sir. Are you uh, going to throw some light on integration part as well, like yes. CIG? Again? Yes. Yes. I will be covering up the CIG also. Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now coming in here. So these are some basic you can see under uh, architecture of Ariba network contract by management, buy, sell, and all request and everything. So it follows from the buyer to supplier. 
and it is like it's a bi-directional also so suppliers sometimes if they respond so the data flows bi-directional like right? both the sides so buyer to supplier and supplier to buyer also okay so these are the things from the Ariba network so these are some basic key or you can say like uh, key figures like these many companies are using this one every minute transactions happening in here annual commerce business they are doing it here so these are some uh, uh, like you can see the figures which has been used across worldwide by SAP Ariba okay so uh, Ariba network so again like digital marketplace where the buyer supplier collaboration happens on this one okay so these are some basic from the same network. so like these are the basic information that you can go through if you want any doubts in there so you can always let me know okay so basically we are trying to avoid any uh, already the places are there like if there's any uh, differentiation in process so for example if you see nowadays in companies when you are doing in a supply chain so some people who are doing the contract management is not aware of the sourcing cycle or you can say that some people who are doing the uh, procurement cycle they are not aware of doing the uh, sourcing cycle so it's a little you can say like the lot is there in between right so Ariba is a suit integrated application also so it provides a feature that is a suit integrated where you can have the complete cycle and you can see all these informations at a one place. If you give an access, if you give an authorization to a person, he will be able to access the complete architecture. OK, so these are the things from that perspective. So navigation your dashboard. So I will be showing you that how you can navigate your dashboard and all. OK, so this is how you have it. So let's let's take uh, let me take you on a what and say like I will take you to the Ariba platform. So here you have this one. This is your Aliba platform. OK, so if I say first of all, anywhere in the world, if you go more or less, you will see. <coughs> sorry, more or less, you will see this information as it is. Yes, there is a customization you can do a little bit for each. Like every user can do a little bit customization on this, like home procurement and you have other modules in here. So these modules you will see. OK, but overall, if I say it, majorly the architecture looks like this way. OK, so have your user, whatever the user you are, it will be shown in here. Create, manage recent tabs in here, same in here. So let me, OK, before this explain, let me give you a more overview from the Ariba perspective from this side. Let me tell you one thing. You will get a basic idea on this one. OK, here. OK. SAP Ariba. OK, let's take it. So when we talk about SAP Ariba, so as I showed you the course content, right? you have seen almost the 10 modules are in there, right? So Ariba has bifurcated these modules. OK, these modules in the two streams. One is known as upstream. Let me do it. OK. One is upstream and another is downstream. I hope like font side is OK. Please let me know if it is too small. I will try to make it a little bigger more. OK, please let me know if like if this is something uh, not visible or like a little bit slower in the size. So I'll, I'll try to increase this one. OK, so this is first part. The Ariba is bifurcated into the two modules upstream and downstream. So what is the logic of it? So if I say the major difference between the upstream and the downstream is the transactional document. We do not process any transactional document under the upstream modules. OK, so this is this is you can say like a basic a diff, major differentiation between the upstream and the downstream. Let me let me put something in here first. So first you have. Uh, you can say like uh, under upstream you have multiple modules. Let me start with like mention this sourcing. Sorry, uh, let me here put it. OK, so sourcing I'll just put it here. Mm, I just put here this one. OK, sourcing. Under sourcing. So under sourcing, OK, after sourcing, if I say here, if I put it here second. Uh, after sourcing, you can have the contract management. OK, after this, you can have the SLP that is supplier life cycle. 
performance. Okay, we all also call it in the smallest SLP. So these are modules basically sourcing module, contract management module, SLP module. Okay, now when once we talk about okay, these are the upstream modules. Let me put some downstream modules also when we talk about downstream. So you will be having like here uh, procure to order. Sorry, uh, procure to order. We some you must be heard of like P2O, like generally people refer with this. Uh, small short form then you have it sorry to okay so in this one let me just put it in the line manner so that okay so for the second you can say like uh, <clears throat> invoice management invoice sorry invoice management okay then after that we also have one more that is uh, procure to order to order also i'm covering up the catalog management in a brief but i'm putting here in the downstream generally it comes into the upstream side but i'm putting from the perspective that we will be using the catalogs for creating the pr POs, the catalog pr non-catalog pr from that perspective so that's why I'm putting it in here. Okay, catalog management. I now, think the third one would be P two P BNI. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, oh, sorry. I, I'll miss this one. Okay, yeah. procure to pay. So procure to pay. Uh, so we call it P two P. Yes, uh, we also call it this B and I. So like multiple names are there: uh, buying and invoicing, B and I. Okay. So this is how we use this. Uh, this, these are the multiple modules and when we say right Ariba so from Ariba perspective you see in this one right first of all Ariba do not uh, like they have given kind of a flexibility that you can use these modules individually also it's not mandatory like generally people have the confusion like do we need to buy all these modules and all and if you find in the market like most of the people who are working on SAP Ariba generally very few people get an option or like uh, opportunity to work on all the models so they are generally either working on either on sourcing or on contract or on the invoice or on p2p but very like very few people get an opportunity to work on all the models okay so yes if you get an opportunity to work on the modules that is a good part because that gives you a more confidence and you can understand the complete cycle or a lot of more information you can have uh, have in your hand okay and as I said, right, Ariba provides a flexibility to choose the module based on your requirement. So take an example. You are facing some issues related to your invoice management, right? Manually invoices are coming from the supplier, having a lot of uh, issues in that one. You need to manually check all the invoices and something like that, right? If you have in the pain area from the invoice side, you can go for invoice management only. No need for other module. Okay, similar way. If a company says we are getting some issues related to the negotiation, right? The negotiation is not happening up to the mark. We are not getting so much uh, like negotiated rates. Even the people are some getting some other companies are getting better rates. So your team is might be having some drawbacks or like having some hesitation on the uh, negotiation part. Okay. So from that perspective, if you are looking for, you can go for the sourcing. Okay. So this way, wherever you have some requirement based on that the company choose the modules they want if you are looking for just for a process improvement perspective or a digital transformation prospect then you can go for a complete like for example you are looking for your procure to pay to be like little more digital digitalized right no manual intervention is required and that one and the process should flow in a correct manner okay so then you can go for procure to pay complete one now here you can see this procure to order is also there Right. So this will also I will show you because what happens is procure to order people sometimes use it where they just want to create the PRPU in Ariba and the next of the activities like GR and ask uh, invoicing and all invoice reconciliation and all needs to be performed at the ERP side. Any ERP, not necessarily that should be an SAP ERP, any ERP. So there's a functionality that you can push that order from the Ariba 
uh, to the ERP side and you can get a copy there in the ERP and then you can process other activities in there. Okay, so these are the things are there in this one. And if I say like, I'll just put in here, like let's discuss one module by one, one, one. So what we are going to cover from an overall perspective, like obviously the content is there. I'm just still giving you a brief about that one. So for example, if you see this sourcing, so in sourcing, you will see this, what we are going to cover is the RFI, which is request for information. Okay, so here I'm going to, okay. Then we have request for proposal, sorry. I'm, it's going there only. RFP, that is request for proposal. or sometimes people call it RFQ also, like RFP or a request for proposal or request for quotation. Okay, so uh, I'll just put Q here. So proposal or you can say quotation. Okay, then we will be covering here the auctions. So auctions generally like if you refer it here, there are two types of like reverse, majorly reverse and forward. Okay, so these two type of auctions you will be seeing here, reverse and forward. We will be covering up this both and reverse have like multiple other other parameters are in there. I will be covering up all these things. Then we will be also covering here the templates. Okay, so templates when we say the templates, right? So if you say this like from the upstream perspective, from the upstream perspective, template is you can say it's a backbone. Okay, the template is more of a backbone, right? If you know the template part, so you can say like from an implementation perspective, so it will be a very important part. Okay. So, okay. I also want to add one more thing. The training that we are going to cover, right? It will be in the two perspective. One is an, as an end user, like how you navigate the system, how you uh, create, like if someone asks you simply create a project, sourcing project, requisition in Ariba and all. So how are you going to do that? That is an end user perspective, right? Also, if you are going to work on the implementation side of SAP Ariba, for example, you, your company has bought a completely new Ariba system. Okay. And they want you to configure it for themselves. So in that perspective, that is like implementation part. So in implementation side, you need to configure these part, like the templates, you need to design the template, you need to set up the approval flow for them. You need to set up the configuration of the data, right? All those things you need to perform as a implementation part. So the training will be covered from the two aspects. One is from the end user perspective, where you will know how to run this tool, how to perform the activities in the tool, and how you, uh, and the other one is the implementation side. That if a configuration needs to be done in the Ariba system, how are you going to do that? Okay, so that's from that perspective, these templates are implementation perspective, templates are the very important part. Okay, now, after templates, we will also be covering up here the approval flow. How to set up an approval flow. Okay, like the serial approval flow, parallel approval flow, custom approval flow, how to set up the lookup tables and all, everything will be covered in this one. Okay, so these are the things which is very important from the, uh, like these majorly, if you see the, these two things are very important from the uh, implementation perspective. And these are the major, as I said, right? So this is, this, this is like you can say, uh, from the implementation perspective, this this cover almost 80, 80, 70 to 80 percent of your, uh, you can say like the knowledge. If you are good on creating templates, managing the approval flow, so you are quite good in that. Okay, so we'll be covering up these things in very detail. Same way. Okay, so we have the contract management here. So similar way, if you see this, uh, we can have in the contract management perspective, so contract management is little, uh, you can say, have a little uh, uh, mix of upstream and downstream. If I present, if I say, right, first under the contract management, or let me, what I do is I'll just copy this slide and just paste it here. Okay, so in this one, let me just remove this one. Uh, that is there. So here I'll just put contract management. Okay, so when we say contract management perspective, right? So in the contract management, sorry. 
be here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's not in here. Let me put it here contract management so first is your like contract workspace okay one side you will find the contract workspace another side you will find one more thing is that is contract terms or sometimes people call it contract compliance like both things like multiple things has been called in this one okay so these things you will be find out so this part is majorly from the downstream perspective Whereas this part is from the upstream perspective. Okay, so I will be explaining when we start the contract and then I'll explain it. It will be easy for you to understand also. So I just want to show like these are the two aspect of it. So contract management is kind of little mix of upstream and downstream. Okay, so that way I will be covering up in here. So I'll just take a brief about this one. So what generally we cover in the contract workspace and all. So we cover the master agreement in here. Master agreement, uh, if I say here. Uh, master agreement, master, then sub agreement, how to create a sub agreement, then how to create a standalone. Okay, so these are some basic of it that we will be covering up. We will be covering up other parts of clauses and uh, uh, this negotiation strategies, how you negotiate with the supplier. So those things will be covered in this one also. Okay, so this is how we will be covering up in here. Then we come to the SLP side. So if we come on the SLP side, let me put it here, like just continuing this one, I'll remove this. I'll just take this one. Then we come on the SLP, okay? In the SLP, what we generally cover is uh, the supplier request. So why SLP? So first of all, what is the logic of using the SLP? Why we need SLP, supplier life cycle and performance, right? So supplier life cycle is basically used majorly for the clients who are looking from the major data to be taken care from the supplier. Like basically they want to have the all the information about the supplier. Generally SLP being used by the people who are, uh, you can say, uh, dealing in the industries like aviation, defense, research, so that they have all the information, like the certifications, like uh, the supplier is following all the procedure. You have all the documents, whatever the documents you require, you need to get, uh, gather all those informations from the supplier. So from that perspective, generally you go for SLP. Okay, if you are not a very complicated structure or doing into very uh, sensitive production of something, right? You generally do not go for SLP. So this is based on the client to client requirement. But yes, if it is required something more on that perspective, you can go for an SLP. Okay, so SLP is nothing but it's basically to onboard a supplier, basically like the process of onboarding the supplier on your Ariba platform in a light detailed manner. So the first part of that one is supplier request. Then you have, supp sorry, supplier request. Okay, once you have the supplier request, that's an internal process. I'll be explaining this one in detail also. Then you have the supplier registration. Okay, after that, if you want, so these are the two main processes, request and registration. These are the main process of onboarding any supplier. After that, you have the qualification and all. So that is also a process we'll be covering up, but these are the two basic main process of supplier onboarding okay supplier request and registration so i think I, i'm like i will be showing everything on the system i'm just giving you an overview here of all these things what we generally cover okay so these things we generally cover in the slp side okay so let me just put it here in this one i'll just write here so that it will look at one place supplier request and supplier registration okay so here i'll just remove the numbering here okay so these are the things which cover under the slp side similar way so these are the upstream modules so you can see this here we are not dealing with any pr to pr 
So this is very like as I said, right? Transition. So when we say transitional documents, right? When we say transitional documents, we do not cater anything on the under the upstream. So transitional documents are nothing but your uh, your purchase order, your invoice, your receipt. These are nothing but your transitional documents, right? So these things we generally do not process anything of that in here in the upstream side. For that we have downstream to creating that one. Or you can say the basic difference is here why we do sourcing and all these things in here to identify a right supplier who can provide us the right material at right time. In a more on a supply chain perspective, I give you a definition on it. So we do this process to get this one. Okay, to get a right supplier, like we need to choose which supplier can give us the right, which supplier is good, who can provide us the better rates and who can provide us the better quality or better material on time. This is what we try to achieve from this one. Once we have the supplier there in place, like after this selection, then we go for a process, the documentation part you can say, releasing the actual purchase requisition or purchase order or giving the invoicing receipt and all. So this is a more of a process and this is more of a, uh, like you can say, like a uh, process of finding out the supplier. Here, this is more of a documentation process. This is more of a finding out the right supplier in the market. Okay, so here we will be like PR to PO. So if I explain like here, so basically what happens is in the PR to PO, what you will be doing is you will be creating a uh, like PR and PO. This is what we are going to do in here. So let me do it here. Okay. So this is what we generally cover into this one. Procure to order. We create a PR and we create a, like once it is get approved, we'll create a purchase order. Whereas when we come to the next one, that is invoice management. So here we generally cater the requirement from the invoicing side. That is invoice and invoice reconciliation. Okay. Let me put Okay, this is our coming in this. Let me format this. Okay. Invoice reconciliation consists of your exceptions. So I will be discussing this one when we discuss the invoice management, like the exceptions. How do you get to the exceptions in the uh, invoice reconciliation process? So that will be also covered. How the exceptions generated, how you, how you can clear them and all. So this part also goes into there. Okay. Now here, when we say this, so this procure to pay is a complete cycle. It's a mix of like, it's a, a mix of this one. Like, so here we can say like this way, sorry, uh, PR, you will be creating a PR, then it will get converted into a PO. Then you will be performing a GR goods receipt. Then you will be performing the, you know, the invoices will be coming from the supplier. Okay. Then you will be doing an invoice reconciliation. IR, I'll just write invoice reconciliation. IR for invoice reconciliation and then okay to pay. Let me put it in the format, sorry. So this is your complete procure to pay. The process of procure to pay. You will be creating, so I will be showing you how to create a PR in Ariva system, how the PO getting generated in the Ariva system, how you can perform a GR, goods receipt, generally like receipt we refer in the Ariba. GR is a word that we generally we use from the ERP perspective, goods receipt, but the meaning is same like. Then we have the invoice, which generally comes from the supplier, but I will be showing you from that how we can also create on behalf of supplier, we can also create the invoice in our system. And then we have the invoice reconciliation process. So you can simply say it's a two-way, three-way match. The general language, if we say it's supply chain process, the two way, three way match will happen at the IR level. And once everything looks good in the invoice, it is okay to pay. Like on a due date, it will get paid to the supplier. Okay. So this is the process of, you can say the complete process. So here you can see this, this PR to PO, this is the, this part, and you can see the invoicing part is coming from here. So it's a mix. So this is the complete cycle of procure to pay BN and buying an invoice. Okay, then we have some catalog management perspective. So catalogs like how, what is a non catalog item? What is a punch out catalog item? What is a CIA file? How you load it? How you want to see the validation rules in there? 
So all those things will be covered in there. What is the lead time of a catalog and all. So those perspective I will be also covering from the catalog perspective. So these are the things from the like upstream perspective and the downstream perspective. Any questions, any, any doubts, like, please, please ask if you have any questions, any queries, anything, if I miss something. Uh, yeah, hi. Yeah, uh, Jai, so are we not covering the templates and the approval flow in the contract management? Yes, yes, we'll be covering up. So we'll be covering up in all three. We will be covering up in the contract management also, and we'll be covering up in SLP also. I just like from the templates, because I just mentioned in here, but we'll be covering up in all. Okay. Okay, and what about? For this spend analysis, SCC. No, SCC is not been covered in the training. Like, the, if you like, uh, if the course content, if you go right, uh, that is uh, what is there in that one. If I show you the yeah, course. I have seen it. It was not there. Yeah, yeah. So like that is something we have because see, actually, what happened is uh, we have some limitations from the system perspective, the tool that we have, right? So this is what uh, like uh, had a discussion with the uh, what you can say like. Uh, uh, with your management also and that we have shown uh, discussed this one so there was some issues with the uh, system perspective so that's why whatever we have the feasibility that we can present to you that we have covered and that has been agreed between uh, like i think between all of us okay so uh, spend analysis also not there eh? Yeah, so reporting part will be covered it's still like from a spend like a small part of reporting like generally you need to create a report. For example, you are creating any uh, whatever the uh, what you can say like this one. Uh, if I say uh, reporting part, right? So if you have created some PR, PO or your sourcing project, contract, SLP request and all. So you want to fetch a data. You want to see, you want to check that your team how many people has worked on this month and how many people has created how many RFPs or how many PO they have created or which supplier got how many business this month. Those kind of reports can be catered via the analytical report. Let me mention it here. Sorry. Or maybe I'll just mention it here only. Analytical reports. Sorry. Analytical reports. Sorry, I'll just... Okay. So we are covering the uh, report customization also. Yes, yes, we are covering. So how to create a report, how to customize the source data and those main fact, uh, second fact, third fact, as well as how to configure those timelines, how to automate the reports. Like if you created a report and you have saved this in the public folder, public work, uh, public workspace folder, then how that report will automatically run on a particular date. Those part will be covered in it. Okay, the pub personal workspace, the okay. public report folder, those things will be covered. Okay. Okay. Because okay. Uh, as far as I am concerned, I am more into the implementation. Okay. Okay. And yeah. TCS is a consulting company. I think uh, the other people here with me from the TCS are also from the implementation part. Of, I, I'm not sure of them because I have been working on SAP Ariba and as far as the end user perspective, from the admin perspective, I know much about it. But uh, I just want to learn more about the integration and all. Okay, okay, fair enough. So, so we'll that, be covering that, that, that's that's my 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 expectation. I'm not sure about the other members who are who are from the TCS. No problem. Okay, okay, okay. So we'll cover. So like, see, whatever the major things that I'm covering up in here, more on the implementation as well as we are covering up the integration perspective also. But major focus is for the Ariba. So like as you say, like the more of the audience uh, audience are here is like they want to more on a Ariba perspective, right? So you have a better knowledge on that one. That is def definitely good. But here, like uh, the I think the objective is mere so learn the how the Ariba works from the two perspective as an end user and the implementation side. But yes, I will be covering up to a quite a extent of uh, integration aspects wherever it is shown and wherever it is possible. So I hope uh, that will uh, will helpful for you. Yeah, sure. Let's start yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Jay, I think we have a CAG in the course content, right? Yes, yes. We have the CIG overview is there in the course content. So if I go in here, uh, let me go back in here. So material here. So if you see this, uh, Ariba reporting. So reporting is there in this one and integration. So he say integration overview. So I will be covering up. So see, like, as you know, right, integration is a job which you need to set up once, right? 
like it's a one time job once you have a connection between the two systems they keep on communicating unless and until there is some error or some issues are in there right so that perspective that i will be showing here that integration overview from that perspective what is the transaction tracker how you see the mappings in there how you can check the um, the we can say the uh, cxml files if you are sending something you are sending some request it got failed how to track the uh, the connections are working fine or not so all those aspects from the integration perspective will be covered in our training okay uh, okay can you go to your, your presentation sure 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 so which one like you want to this yeah. one or like the first one yeah ppt you were presenting right okay okay uh, this one yeah, in SLP, are we going to cover the supplier qualification as well or only till? Yes, no, no, we'll be covering also the qualification. I just mentioned here, like, so it's a major part. So request and registration, mm -hmm. it's a major process. Um, that's why I mentioned here, but yes, we will be covering the qualification also. Yeah, okay, fine. Uh, in the fourth slide, I have one question. So there is a P2P, right? In this P2P, so payment from which system it will be uh, Sent to yeah. supplier. Is it yeah. from the ECC or from Ariba only? No, no. Generally, it has been released from the ECC. Mm -hmm. Which okay, will be this, like what? Uh, in this invoice copy, will send to ECC. Right, right. So basically, what happens is when you are posting the IR into the Ariba system, right? Mm -hmm. I status like so. First, the invoice also once it is uh, like a uh, process completely fine, it got posted at the ERP side. And once everything is clear on this one, on the exception perspective, it will be sent to the ERP and the baseline date, basically like whatever the dates you are mapping it there. So you are putting the IR here and uh, posting date and all that you match with the baseline date. And based on that, ERP releases the payment. All the following documents for that you can see. There. Yeah. Okay. So PO also will be replicated to ECC or only invoice? In this no, no, P also, P also. So PO, yeah. GR, invoice. These all three documents, if you have an integrated system, can be replicated to the ERP system. No, if we don't have integrated, means invoice will be handled from any other third party, right? It's right. From Ariba, right. So correct, Ariba correct. don't have the payment part. Ariba has one module of Ariba Pay, but frankly mm -hmm. speaking, I haven't seen no customer is using that one. Frankly speaking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So yeah. in downstream, we have uh, one more model is called Ariba Pay. Yes, 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 you can say. So this is for majorly for the payment. Like basically what happens is in that Ariba pay, what happens is we need to gather all the information of the bank details and everything from the customer. And those information like ICFC clearing and all those things, documentation and mapping you need to maintain in there. And then the information goes into there and you push it from there. Side. So it's little like from that perspective. But uh, as I said, like see, mostly customers are using ECC. And uh, whenever the IR got posted, they post the same thing into the ERP side. And as per the due date, the email, the payment got released from the ERP side. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So this is uh, this is one part. Okay. So I think uh, this is majorly from this side. And if I go here in this PPT here, so this is some navigation on dashboards and all. So I think. Uh, so these things I'll show you from the system perspective, but yeah, let's just take a quick brief in here. So this is like how you have some things in here uh, where you can have the dashboard in here and you can create these things from here. One, two, three, everything is mentioned in here. This is the navigation dashboard. Whenever you see oh, work on Jay, any. Jay, sorry, uh, can you please maximize? Okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah, Go into the presentation. yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Okay. So these are the points you can see like this is the search bar. This is your uh, recent tab, manage tab. So to do list and all. So these this is a dashboard. Every user can customize on its own, right? By default, you can even set up some customers on a like when we disc when we are setting up the dashboard templates, right? You can use this dashboard template to set up for a bigger level, of, bigger uh, crowd, like bigger people, like you will be setting up that one template, publishing that template of dashboard and every customer, I be sorry, every end user in your company will be able to see the similar. But later on, they always have an option to change it a little bit as per their requirement. So I will be showing you that one also. It's just a brief in here mentioned in here, right? So you can have the options to edit tiles, tile setting options are available and all those things remove tile options are there manage you can all tiles so from a system perspective you can say like ariba allows maximum five tiles on a dashboard 
Okay, so this like people ask you question like how many tiles you can set up on a dashboard. So there's a limitation that that maximum five tiles. Okay, so here you can see this some of the like to do content is there that contains almost like up to 50 approval requests like you can see in the, the uh, to do list. So to do is basically that what you need to work on, right? So there are two things. One is my task and another is to do. So my task is more effort from the upstream perspective related activities and to do is from more from the downstream related activities. Then you have recently viewed. So you can see this content displays the five most recently accessible. You have recently opened your contract, your sourcing project, your RFI, RFPs, anything. It will show from the recent views items from there. So it's easy to navigate. So these are some like basically Ariba has done provided these options from the access perspective, like easy access to the end users. Then you have the common actions in here. So what are the common actions you generally do, like creating the PR, creating the PO, sourcing project, sourcing request and all. So from that perspective, these things will be covered. Back. OK, then so you have the self service requisitions procure to pay. You can create the requisitions in here. You can have some automation also in there. If your approval flow is not there, the PO will get generated automatically. But if you are setting up some approval flow in there, then it will be wait for the approval to be processed. So these things will be covered when I will be showing you there. So you will be understand like how these things in there. You have some automation related things like auto GR you can do. So for example, from the PR to PO process, as soon as you create your PR, you submit it and you have an approval. So after approval, automatically the PO will generate. The PO will send to the supplier. And if you set up a GR on an auto GR basis, the GR will automatically happen on a particular date. Basically, that's a lead date, lead time. Generally, we set up on that basis. So automatically a GR will happen. Supply will submit the invoice. And if there's no issue in the invoice and it get a complete match with the PU and the receiving quantity, then it will automatically goes into the paying status. So you understand like only the part as an end user, you need to submit the PR. Rest all the process will happen automatically in a manner. So these are some like based on the requirement of the client, how they want. So major part, if you see from the Ariba perspective, right? You will be in a constant touch with your client. You need to get the information. So whenever we discuss, even though if you see this, when we discuss with the client, so there's an activate methodology, prepare, explore, and all those phases are there in that, right? So the basic idea from your perspective is to first the gather the information, how the customer want, what the customer want. From that perspective, you need to configure the system as per their requirement. And as it's a SaaS based application, it's a cloud platform, right? So there are some limitations. It's not that e, like generally in ERPs and also you have the access to change all these coding and all you can do something, right? Same way, but in Ariba, it's a limitation. You cannot change anything abruptly. You need to some of the some of the places you have the restriction where you need to reach out to SAP Ariba. And SAP Ariva will suggest you how to perform this one or it can be performed or not. Because it's a cloud tool. That is a limitation of it. Here. So I will be showing you the, where the limitation comes into the picture and where you can have a little bit free hand to perform or uh, to do something to the system. So I will be covering up those things also in the system. OK, I hope till now is it clear a little bit any doubts, any questions? Everyone is fine with this brief intro about the SAP Ariba or still have uh, any doubt? Uh, Jay. Yes, please. Uh, so will you be providing us the standard material for certification? Ariba certification. Yeah, so we, we will be trying our best to provide you a lot of information here. If you see this like so we also also have some assessment modules in here, which give you a brief idea about the questionnaires and what other things been come up in the question. So, in the certification, always the questions are a little bit different, but yes, we always try to cover maximum that will help you to clear the exam. Okay, so okay, the standard here. material will be provided, is it? Yes, yes, yes. So here oh, you can oh. see this, like everything is here. And if you see this, there are some lab activities. So they are loading all the activities, documents, other documents, they will also load in here. So you will be able to use those documents for future reference also. Okay, thanks. Okay. OK, so that's uh, one. OK, now let's go to the system. So first is Ariba introduction that is. So let's discuss on the Ariba dashboard. 
okay what is the ariba this one and all so how the dashboard works and how how you can access it so very first thing you can see this is a url whenever there is a url will be given you will be like entering and logging into this one and from there you will be coming on this is the welcome page you can see the home page of sap ariba okay generally you can set up these tabs on your own also but you can see this like majorly the modules that you buy you will get the access of those so basic setup is always there in the ariba so here you can see this like lot of things are there because it's a demo system okay but here you can see contract procurement invoicing catalog product and procurement supplier manager and everything in here so this is how you will be seeing like if you click on the procurement tab it will give you it will show you more information from the procurement perspective to dos and all these things right now as i said right you can configure these things right so here if you see this action i'll just click on this edit option so you can see this current tab you can configure these tabs in here okay you can configure all these tabs in here and you can add something in here but the basic what you are seeing in here it comes from the dashboard manager dashboard templates okay so there are dashboard templates under the core admin and admin so when we'll discuss the core admin then i'll be showing you that one so here i'll just uh, quickly show you that so here is the dashboard manager so this is like core admin so we will be moving core admin part like continuously because lot of things are been managed from here okay so sorry i opened this one one dashboard manager here here dashboard templates i will be showing you once we'll discuss the core admin part so these things are controlled from here the the basic of it right then you can see these these things you can remove and add in here and you can have the tiles in here so i think uh, uh edit properties revert tab let me see this i'm just re uh, resetting my uh, page in here so these uh, templates are the different uh, ones other than the sourcing templates that you mentioned yes 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 these are different okay let me let me show you that let me just a second let it load it properly i'll show you this this is just for displaying in the front end to the end user and adjusting and sourcing template is something different yes 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 sourcing table uh, template is different and this one is different Just a second, guys. Just loading in here. Okay. So if I go into the core admin, let me show you the templates how it works. If I go to the dashboard templates in here. Now, so currently, let me see this. Like maybe uh, I'll just configure this one. So here you can see the ranking also works in this one. So rank, rank one means like uh, that is having more. Uh, 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 value in here okay name you can name this one you can create a new template as per your own also creator who is the group like you can assign a particular group to this also like this particular group will be able to use it and for this group it will be reflected like this way okay and here you get the option to configure and delete so first understand the very basic in here ariba functionalities like access everything works on the whatever the roles has been assigned to you so if you go in any company and all if you are working on any ariba module right if you are not seeing something here right that means you are missing some access that is the 90% cases unless and until there is some issue with the system you will be definitely having the less access same here if you see here like this options i am getting right these options are coming for me because i have the access if you do not have access you will not be able to see this most of the things so this is how you control like who can do what i am getting this option to change these dashboard templates so you can understand it. this is something little critical because end users are not that uh, you can say like very experienced on the ariba platform if you change something for their layout they will say so like everything is not working for us uh, what has happened and all right so generally from that perspective you do not provide access to the people who are not actually related to that one or they should be authorized to do that so try to avoid that is very important and you will find it like when we work on these projects so a limited access will be given to each and every person 
otherwise if you give a full access to everyone they might do something blunder like if you change something you delete all templates and everything will be gone they need to you need to set up it again same happens for the templates approval flows and all if someone makes a, some big mistake in here then it will impact because in ariba when you are testing something or you are working on something right when you buy ariba ariba provides generally two realms we call them realms if i'll just write it here so let me just put it here in this mm -hmm. uh okay i'll just put it here in this one so ariba basically provides two realms we call them realms one is production production sorry and another is test this is general okay so like erp system where you have this uh, development queue and all those uh, departments right uh, then you can work on it and you can move your changes from your uh, uh, quality to the development and development or cycling development to <clears throat> quality and then you can move them to the production right you move the transports in there it is not like that way in ariba if you are doing some testing in ariba in uh, er uh, sorry in test realm in ariba you need to do and configure the same thing again in the production okay so it's it's like more on a you will be doing a work on a live system so anything happens in the that scenario it impacts a lot right so for example you are loading some data account assignments company codes or gl accounts and all and if you have done something wrong in there you have loaded wrong file or you deleted some data from there then your whole system will be down like everyone will be facing error okay so this is something very critical when you are working on the ariba side okay you cannot move something you tested in something like you checked something in pr uh, in pr and all that you want to move it in the production you need to do it again in the production system so therefore the access will be given to a limited people not everyone will be allowed to do lot of things so this is where you get an approach like you need to think over it like how you want to give the access and all so this is also like you suggested see when you go as a implementation partner you are the better person to guide the customer even customer never know what is ariba they just bought it right so as a implementation partner you need to guide them how to do these things and how you want to perform like i i've seen it right whenever you go for this workshop sessions so client brings up all their end users and everyone right so that is not a good approach it should be like train the trainer should be there you need to have some key people from the business side you need to guide them you need to make them understand like how this system works and let them communicate the same thing to the end user level okay otherwise what will happen is everyone is coming in there they will everyone is trying to do something in here then it will be a mess okay so now here you can see this this is the template is there if i just click on the configure in here <clears throat> so you can see this now this is the dashboard and you can see this return to administrator page new template editing option is coming in here you can see this marks are coming in here right and these are the tiles these are known as tiles 1 2 3 4 okay so these are the four tiles that you can see in here right we can manage these tiles okay in a dashboard so can simply click on this one and you can see this edit tile settings remove tile manage all tile and remove all tile okay anyone like you can click on any one of these tile you can do this one remove tile manage tile and all so you can click in here you can see this and you can click on it anyway so this is standard so as i said right so generally this feature also comes to the users if they want to like you can see this this i uh, this uh, like a little wrench type of icon it is coming is for the settings configure tabs so you can do this okay now let me show you so for example i just remove this tile okay remove uh, remove tile so i remove this one let it process this okay so now again i'll just remove this one remove tile now three tiles in here right okay now i'll try to remove one more let me make it remove tile
Okay, now two tiles here. Okay, now let me go back. Let me here. Let me manage all tiles. Okay, this is how you can do this. Simply click on manage all tiles, and this is how it will be coming on this one. So you can see this. These are some available tiles by Ariba. Okay, you can see this. These are the name of the tiles, pinned items, my contract request, and all. So you will see here, like all these things are here, and here you can read maximum five tiles per dashboard. So this is a limitation. You can see this. If your customer says, "I want more tiles in here," you cannot create it on your own. Okay, you cannot create like if says your supplier, your customer says, "I want ten tiles per dashboard." Okay, so that is not possible. So from our side, it's not possible. The next step is anything. So first, you need to provide your input. If the customer still says no, uh, we do not trust. Like we do, uh, we want some confirmation. So the next step is to reach out to SAP Ariba customer support. I'll write it here. So generally, you will find that in the uh, in the mark uh, like in any project, SAP Ariba customer support. Sorry, I'll just spell it. Customer support. Okay, we reach like. Generally, when you are before go live and also they assign a generally a project manager from the SAP uh, SAP ERP side. But in case if your project is already went live, then you will be raising a SR service request. We call it a service request. Nowadays, it's like uh, been referred to as a case. Nowadays, we refer this as a case. This happens via Connect. Ariba Connect. We call it a Ariba Connect. I think I can. So this access will only be given generally when you are getting an Ariba run. Okay, so here, I, if I can possibly show you that also, let me see this uh, Ariba Connect. Yeah, so this is connect dot Ariba dot com. So this is the portal from where you will be raising the SR. So basically, what happens is these are all process. These are all process from a management perspective, as a project management perspective, or like you will be guiding to the customer also, right? So in this one, this is SAP Ariba Connect. Whenever you are going into the for any implementation, all right, customer will be given DSC rights. DSC rights is mentioned here. Uh, let me put it here. DSC. DSC. That is designated support contact. Sorry. Support contact. Okay, DSC. That is the full form for DSC. So, what is a DSC? Basically, what happens is, whenever you are buying this Ariba module, Ariba provides you a DSC access. We call it a DSC. So, the, you can allocate three person in your company as a DSC. Those people will be having the access to raise the SR case to the Ariba directly. Okay, not everyone can raise an SR. It's a, a DSC persons who are there. Who can raise the SR to the SAP Ariba? So Ariba generally provides three contacts. I'm not sure like if they have increased that one, but generally the minimum they provide like maximum they provide three people from the any company that you have bought it. So you can give three names that these three people will be given the DSC access. Any of the three people, anyone can raise an SR or you can say open a case in case of any query. So for example, take an example of this scenario, right, where you are having this one. But you can say like five tiles. Your customer say no, we want ten tiles. Now you know like as per your understanding that is what maximum Ariba provides. But it's still like customer is not little bit satisfied. They want the uh, answer from Ariba itself, right? So in that scenario, you will be raising an SR to the customer on this one, and you will be mentioning that can this be possible to increase the maximum tiles per dashboard to ten? And if they say no, then it can't be done. That is that is very straightforward. Like this is how the project manager works, right? If Ariba is saying that they cannot do this, then it can't be done. You need to either find out some workaround, like any other way and all. But from this perspective, if you want like only exactly this way, then it cannot be done. Okay, so this is how these things works in this way. So you can see this currently, like here you can see my requisitions. My receipt, these two tiles are there. You can even remove that also. See, simply. So once you remove it, it does not like it, it goes away. It comes here in this one, right? Let me remove this. My requisition, okay, and my receipts, okay, 
and if you see this my requisitions come in here and my receipts will be somewhere here in this one okay so this way it will come in here and you click done so here it is so it gone now edit content or something like here you can see this revert to tab and here compare to default setting add content and everything you can see this here so add content in this one you click in here current tab so this is a current tab so on each tab you can configure whatever you want to see for each tab you can configure so here current tab add content in here so here you can see this these are the options coming in here click and drag the content items so this dashboard is completely like changeable you can do that so here for example you have Ariba discovery announcement all those things you can do that so done in here I think I came out of it right okay let me go back to the template there dashboard templates I can show you there from there so which one we were discussing here this one I think right configure I'll just show you this okay so this one so here we'll go here manage all tiles in here now here nothing is here I want to add some tiles look for example event status let's select it it will come in here I can select maximum five tiles any my five tiles so for example I go for my invoices uh, maybe sourcing projects or uh, my task or maybe I'll just select my task so how many four as soon as I will be selecting fifth all these options will be grayed out grayed out means you cannot select them so let me show you let just I'm selecting I think uh, expiring contracts see this all are got grayed out now though no option is coming for me to select because I have completed my five if you remove any it will again select options are coming okay so this is how you will be able to perform this one and click done so once you click done in here so it's always moving in here so I, I just need to go back in there in the template configuration configure So you can see this all the tiles are coming now here five one two three four five okay similar way yes please yeah Jay so this is dashboard is set up, uh, setting up for your user right so I want to this uh, means set up same dashboard for all the users how can we do that yes 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 so here see this template that you are putting up in here right so this will be mm -hmm. coming by default for all the users so that is why we are setting up the template individual okay. user can also do this. this is return to admin page sorry now you can see here this is mm -hmm. what we are doing it for the template level so okay. what will happen is this rank plays an important role and here you can assign some group also the people from belongs to this group and all they will be seeing the template like this so you can have multiple dashboards here templates and based on the group also you can see here add it mm -hmm. okay so here this is a customer admin one I'm going to edit this one so here you can see this groups you can choose not multiple only single so for example people's are from the like asset manager group so most probably mm -hmm. the asset team will be having requirement to see some tiles related to from the more on the asset perspective right so you can mm -hmm. set up a template for that and you can select this one so what will happen is asset manager team the people who will be having the asset manager role will be able to see this template like by default this template will be coming on their dashboard mm -hmm. so this way you can choose and assign to a separate separate like one people is from the invoicing team they want to have a different set of uh, template and one team is from there that way you can define okay okay so, so this is a template yeah so once this is published, so again, users want to do any refresh their dashboards or will it automatically update their dashboards? They can do that. So they have the individual access for that one. So they can do that. That is what. So here. OK, let me go back here. If I go here now on my home page. 
So this is template. If you publish it, that will work. So now you can see this. This is my dashboard. OK, mm -hmm. and here you can see this. I can minimize and I can delete this item. But they can restore it. So restore revert tab to the default setting. So whatever the default setting will be there, right? Basically what you have set up for the template level, they can again come back on this. OK, or if they want to add some more content to this one, so they can do this one. So you allow them like so basically if you allow them so they can do it, but it will not impact the template. Remember this will be only on an individual level like only for me. It will not be impacting the other users template or the main template that you designed. It will not impact that. Right, right, yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. Ah. okay, so this is part from uh, the yeah. Uh, Jay, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. So why this ranking is required there? Ranking, yeah. So, so you like said the ranking is very important. Yeah. Yeah. So ranking is from the perspective like you have a multiple templates, right? So the ranking will right. be placed like whoever the whichever the ranking is there on the top, it will be reflected and you will be using that for the multi. So for example, okay. For example, if I show here this one, you have the ranking here, core admin. Dashboard templates. So you are having see multiple templates in here, right? And you are not using see here none and none. So in this case, if you have published this one and you have published another one, then which will be so? So it will be decided based on the rank. OK, so this happens that multiple times we are using. So this is generally to avoid this one. So, so as we recommend, the recommendation is always just keep it a one single template or having the specific template to the groups and all. But sometimes you can say like everyone has their own requirement and also they sometimes do this one. So keep our ranking in there that perspective to get this to be assigned to a particular okay. in the same series there. OK, let's suppose uh, we are deleting the first one, then mm -hmm. there are the second and three options with the group uh, of. So uh, we have to first publish it or it, yes. it can direct. No, no, it, we need to first publish it without publishing the whatever the changes we have done it, right? It will not reflect to the like the latest version. So basically the version. So if you see like the current version is publishes two and we are still editing the three. So whatever I have done till now, right? It will not be getting uh, like reflected at the end user level because we have not published it. So publishing is always important in this part. OK. So currently uh, the one you are using is the first one. Yes, I'm using the first one because I'm from the customer support admin okay. group. So this is how I will be getting it into this. One. OK. Now, OK, so okay. yeah, here you have the themes also. So generally like nothing much on the theme side because Ariba generally provide only a couple of two themes here. I think one is a blue theme and the light theme. So just the color how it looks it. So that's the only thing. Uh, coloring and a little bit uh, themes has been designed by the river. So I think if you are click on the light theme, it will change to a light here. The color will be changed in here, so it's nothing much. Yeah, so you can see this. I think it is coming like little light. Let me go in here. Yes, yeah, so you can. This is now it's coming little light color. If you go to the dark theme, it will come little dark. So this is just from a like a little bit on the decoration part. If I just go in here, I'll change it to the dark theme. Blue theme in here. Save it. So now you can see this. It is little dark coming in here. See, grays and all these things are coming. So this is from that perspective. Okay. So this is how you generally like configure your dashboard. You can design your dashboards and all. Uh, yes, please. Uh, any questions? Uh, Jay. So in order to do this. Uh, designing and publishing etc so do you have to be logged in as an administrator or you need the uh, admin rights the roles yeah so role part i will be coming uh, later mm -hmm. but yes for this one you have the dashboard manager role and all so those roles you need to be have in your profile so groups basically like in when we talk about ariba so groups and the roles like you can generally refer with the groups and all so from that perspective you will be assigning those things OK, so once you have this access, then only you will be able to do that. If you do not have that access, you will not be able to do this. OK, OK, so this is the part like here manage. If I go into the core admin part perspective, so under the user manager, if you see it, so here we have the groups. 
so i like so these things like as i said like core admin will be coming going you know like this is major from this one so i will be showing you so this is a list all if you can see this i'll just search it here so it's a long list so these are some of the groups are like ariba managed system configured groups are there so these are the groups basically these groups are nothing but roles or you can say they are roles which what you can do in the system you need to be part of that group to perform there. like for example you want to use ariba on mobile so you need to be part of this group then only you can use the ariba mobile app otherwise you will not be able to use it so this is how it works so i'll be covering up later because once we'll discuss this part then i'll be coming in the core admin and admin but i will be later on i'll be explaining these things but this is how you need to have the groups which you have the access like member of this group can do this if you are in a member of this group you can do this so this is how it is there okay yeah jay regarding the tiles can you go back to the tiles yes please Okay, so here let me go in the admin part, core admin. Dashboard manager, dashboard template. If I go here, configure. Ah, uh, yes, please. So we can able to show only five tiles, right? Yes. If they want to customize it, which are not there in the tiles, multiple tiles list. So can we? do it or uh, ariba only can do it no we cannot do it we need to reach out to ariba so that's why so like we need to raise an sr or we need to open a case with sap ariba and sap ariba first of all will ask what is the requirement and they will first give you a go ahead whether it can be done or not if they say they cannot do it then that's an end of the road okay but if they say yes this can be done then they generally charge for it okay i will be showing like so it's like some of the things are free of course i will be showing you when we discuss some other parameters are right to changing the parameter name and all those things they do it for free okay they do not charge it but if you are looking for something which is customization which is not there as a standard so they charge for it they provide the costing and all those things and you need to review that and if you approve it then they do perform that one and they need some requirement on that one also from your side so they generally share some standard templates they have to gather the information with us from the customer from the client so we need to provide that information our requirement this is what we want and then we uh, give to them and they configure that one okay okay so they charge for that one so generally ariba charge for so like it's a uh, uh, it's a paid service like most of the things the customization basically wherever you are going for any customization they generally charge for that like not just for the template per se i am telling you like for future uh, like in the uh, coming sessions we will be discussing the sourcing and all right so there also if you are making any changes to this one and you want some additional fields in there so they charge for that so i will be discussing that i'll be showing you that one okay so from that perspective okay so, uh, jay have yeah. you co come across any such case uh, where the tiles have been increased to seven more than five mm, in your frankly, experience no frankly i haven't seen that Okay. I haven't seen it. Yeah. Okay. And one. Yes. Uh, yes. You please. are you are changing the tiles uh, depends on the group, right? What if mm -hmm. you have uh, same user in different groups? So which one will take the priority? So the rank one. The rank, rank one here. Yes. On so for example, like this user is there in asset manager group also, and this user is there in the customer admin group also. Okay. So which rank is one? This one. So this tile will take a preference on it. Okay, and uh, if user wants to change by individually, so they can do that. So that access is there, right? So as I showed, right, for individual user, you can do some little changes in there, hide something, delete something. So those possibilities all for all the end users are given on the home page, but that will not impact anything at the template level. Yeah. It will remain okay. available. Yeah. So you can have that option also, like you see this right, this one here. If I go here home, you always have this option to like revert to the original template default setting so here if you click on this icon here you can see this revert tab to set to default setting so whatever your default setting is there you can always revert it so if you for example by mistakenly you have deleted this common action button and all these things right so you can still go in here and you can revert to default setting and it will come back again so default setting means that the tile tiles will be the uh, taken as the rank one 
yeah the the whatever the template has been set up in the like template uh, administrator there in this one dashboard manager the one which is belong to you like as per the rank and all it will come here and it, you can see the same information again okay okay let me show you this one okay let me see this manage if i go to the core admin side uh, like if you set up your own tab you can also set up your own tab let me show you that one quickly also so there you can do all these things right so currently you can see this uh configure this one okay let me show you this so you can see this here you have this home visibility and all those things right if you click in here manage mm -hmm. it's going in here and what is add new tab you can see this add new tab if i add a new tab it will be a complete blank let me click on this one so i'm creating a new tab okay so here new dashboard tab so or you can say like tab okay and you can even restrict the type of document displayed on this tab so display all document types and if you click on the restrict you have the option to display and all so you can like whatever the things here if you see this display as a primary so this thing you can also set up from here these are all the options you see right when i clicked on that uh, what you can say like uh, that icon is there right so mm -hmm. you have these options to add on your dashboard so for example ariba procure to page there so in this one you want to procurement workspace display as a primary or procurement workspace request as display and primary so these things you can also set up some things from here from here also what type of documents you want to show on your uh, dashboard okay but generally the practice is like display all the document we do not restrict something but yes you have the option so for example i put it like test tab okay and i click okay in here now here you can see this this is the one that i was referring right news common action recently action tile to do so these are the options that you will be seeing right ariba discovery sourcing request summarized view also now you can see this my page is completely blank okay the new tab so if you click in here so this is the test tab you can see this this is a test tab i'm currently on the test tab if i go on home it will show me all this same right so here it is coming now if i go on my tab the new test tab that i created it will be a blank let me click in here see this it's blank now from here you can drag and drop each and everything so here you are not able to see it once i drag anything you will see this there are like lines and sections already there hidden okay let me show you so for example i click this to do and if i see here i can drag here also it will come here also it will come here also wherever you want so here for example i drop it here in this section see here it is coming to do options now same way if i go my documents if i click in here i want to drop here my documents let me do it here see it is coming in now i want this side so i go for common actions i click this and drag simply drag and i will put it here in this section uh, is it came here okay i think it's gone this side so still you can do i think where it is gone oh i did miss it okay let me do this add content okay i think action tiles you want to action tiles add in here let me click on add so action tiles will come see this action tiles came common actions i'm again trying to do it here so let me put it here uh, i'm not sure why oh yeah it came okay so here is and if you want to add recently viewed here under this below this one simply drag and sorry drop here sorry 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 drop here this is how you going to create your first time like if you want to create it create it from the scratch right so this is how you can create so now you can see this this is your new template so you need to publish it it will be available for use this is from a scratch like if you want to but generally like see by default ariba whenever you are buying ariba ariba provides some of the basic information basic setup always there you just need to like little bit modify that one but yes if you want to do it still from the like a scratch and all you want to have like new tab and all so you can again set it up all these things in here so these are kind of like functionalities features been there from the ariba side okay is it fine any questions any doubts i hope like my speed and all those things are fine like please let me know if i'm little fast or little slow so please let me know in this one or any questions are there in this part yeah hi jay uh, can you go to the tile page 
Yes, please. Uh, like, are you want me to edit this one? Like, uh, many no, styles. No, uh, yeah, here, uh, you know, uh, say for example, one of the user IDs assigned to two groups. Okay. 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 And how that you know rank will work? Like, uh, uh, no, so you are saying two groups are assigned to a particular yes, user, right? One user ID is assigned to the two groups. Okay, so so basically, see if you see here, right? Okay, uh, let me return to the uh, administrator page. Yeah, so here you can see this. This is what you are saying, right? So for example, yes. UX user is thirty six is here, right? And yes. this person has been assigned to asset manager. Okay, and I am the same person which is assigned to another group that is maybe a customer admin group or someone. Okay. Okay. In that scenario, whichever the template, you can see this, like you can assign only one group to a particular template. So for example, this one, you can see this, I'm not able to add multiple one. I can select any one. I cannot select multiple. I can either see, for example, classified access. I will be having only classified access. I cannot add asset manager and classified access. So in this case, for example, I am consider this like the user 36 is here also, user 36 here also. Okay. In this scenario, you have these two templates, asset manager and this one, right? So mm -hmm. if you having this rank two, then this will come and this will take a precedence over this one because this will have a rank three. Same user in both this one, right? But this will take a precedence in here because the rank is more on this one. Okay. Okay, so this is how it will work at least. Clear? I hope. Is it okay? Uh, yes, Jay. Okay, thank you. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Okay. Okay, so, um, so this is how you will see the, your dashboard. So you can see this, uh, these options for create, creating uh, your requisition, sourcing project, sourcing request, contact workspace, anything you want to create in here, generally you will be referring to the create option. Okay, then you have manage. You need to manage any core admin. You can see like, like I'm moving multiple times because if you want to manage something, you are basically for managing admin part, core admin part, to do task, task, everything you need to go under the manage part. And here your recent doc, whatever the recent thing, you can see this, whatever the recent documents we have opened will be wrapping in here. The same thing, create, manage, recent is given in here. So you can see this common actions, create, manage, and here is the recent. So this is nothing but the same thing which you are seeing here is here, but this is more from the perspective that uh, it's easy. It's easy from the user perspective that they can move here also navigation. Basically, you can say like user help, like it's a more user friendly navigation being designed and created by the Arima. Okay, and this is your standard search bar. This is your standard search. So here, whatever the things you want to search in the system. Annual report, catalog, contract, workspace, all those things. So you can choose anything from here and then you can put the ID or keywords. And also, for example, if you want to search a sourcing project, so you need to put the title ID or any other item. Or if you want to search a purchase order or requisition, so you need to put the title, either the title or either the ID. You can search with anything. Okay, then you click on this blue icon. It will give you the option for that and you can search it something like if you just click it, so it will show you the like from this perspective filter will come and you want to search for particular this date date created you search it so it will come in here so this is like basic search you can say like the basic standard search if you want to search anything from your home page you will be able to search like this way so you can search anything which is in here okay this standard like so this is basic you can say like the basic standard dashboard how you navigate how you work on this one so creating everything from here you can create the same thing from here recently view you have some document my document my to do task so you can see like my documents in here requisitions three project two and all and you can see here in this one my to do task receiving this much and all so approve you need to approve something here so all those things you can see from here it will give you a basic access of the information on your dashboard Okay. Yeah, Jay. Uh, one more question. Like, uh, yes, please. I just wanted to, you know, log in on behalf of, you know, the other user. Yes. So is it yes. possible? Yes, that so is. Just to check the, you know, the templates are uh, correctly published or not. In that group. Yeah. Okay. So yes, first there are two. So the question that you are having two of like basically two, uh, you can say like two uh, functionalities basically. If I can say first is, if 
you want to access as a someone else that is mm. being done in ariba via delegation let me write it this way here you can do the delegation so the person for example if person is going on leave okay so yes. for a one week he need to delegate so delegate we call this a user delegation so in this one you will be having two people like delegate and uh, delegator so delegator is the person who is going on leave and delegate is the person who will be taking care uh, in absence of him him or her okay so that is how the delegate so this is known as user delegation so i will be covering up that one also uh, for this one and the second part that you said right can you check the template if that person will be having the authorization and access then mm -hmm. only you can use that if that person also doesn't have the authorization or access for to check the templates and all then you will not be able to see that part okay okay so authorization plays a very important role in ariba like only the roles and authorization if you have then only you will be see the particular things in the ariba okay so delegation basically like you will be able to do the things which other person is already doing like what he is doing in a day to day life like what all the accesses he will be having so once he is going on leave he can make you the delegate uh, delegate and you will be when you are logging in there so system generally ask you that you want to access as your name or the other person who is delegated to you so you click on that person's name and you will be acting as as so we have uh, delegator you will be act as everything what he is be able to do it you will be able to do that okay so delegation usually have it for a particular period of time and also everything is there i will show you that one also okay, okay. okay okay now so okay so i hope like dashboard perspective everything is fine so how to see all these things so here you can see some reports are also will be there okay so that means i will be showing you like you can put some reports on the dashboard also i will be once we will be discussing the reporting part i will be showing you that one also okay so i think uh, this is uh, this is all from the introduction perspective of ariba and i hope everything is like from the basic side and the uh, introduction is clear like how we perform all these activities and all and uh, and one more thing i just want to add like when you will be going it for any uh, <clears throat> implement uh, implementation projects and all right so generally if you see like mostly the people which follow is the activate methodology okay so uh, ariba activate methodology okay so basically in this one what happens is you have the four phases prepare explore and all so in that one you first do have a like uh, first you assign the project manager to this one and then later on you will be having like a, uh, some uh, requirement gathering sessions in there then you have some uh, deploy phase like after having your go live and all so the process is like basically uh, the main objective is whatever the current client have as is process okay as is you need to first do a as is what is their as is process and what is going to be like there if i say like to be so you will be understanding their requirement from the requirement perspective you will be getting the knowledge from them like you will be getting their process understanding and then you will be suggesting them like yeah this can be done so for example if i say right uh, sourcing project okay they want that the sourcing projects to be having this much particular rfps and rfis in your template because they are following that one so like they generally follow the rfp and then the follow on rf so these kind of requirements when it comes right so you need to say that the fit gap analysis you will be doing it yes we can cater this requirement and we can uh, provide this kind like we can configure these things in ariba okay they will definitely say like this is what we are following it currently with our legacy system or existing system or orthodox whatever the method they are using till now okay or any other system they will coming with that information as a implementation partner that your job is also from the perspective that you suggest something which is a best practice in the market okay so as a implementation partner you will be suggesting them something like yes obviously the end result or you can say the end uh, uh, what you can say the decision is always with the client but as a good implementation partner that we will we always suggest to suggest something which is better and which is been used by the market leader or industry leaders and you can get a benefit out of it okay so we generally conduct a workshop we show them the ariba uh, this tool what is these features in there and all those things in there and there are some technical team or like you can say some key users from the uh, client side will be there 
they will be putting up some questions to you like can this be done in this one or not and all so these things is you need to explain them. you need to sh- like uh, give the confidence to the customer that yes this can be done in ariba and this cannot be done in ariba so this is very important why i'm explaining these things because these are very important because la- later on the stage these are the major hiccups happens like customer says you have committed something you are not not, not delivering that okay so always is better to have that clarity what you are going to uh, configure as as i said right ariba is a saas based application cloud platform so you have some limitation so generally customer is in always in the you know, we can say like a, uh, in the mindset that whatever we are going like we are paying for this and whatever we request it should be done okay but there always are some limitations you can try the work around to satisfy the requirement but still some of the things sometimes get stuck because of that okay because of the system limitations and all so those things you need to be having a better understanding at the initial phase so that you and the customer will be on the same page and they understand yes there are some limitations for the cloud based systems okay so this is how we generally like suggest everyone whenever you go for an any implementation projects and all okay now uh so that's from the introduction perspective so okay let's move to the next one uh, uh can we move to the slp module the i think first i will i will say like first we'll go for the here as per the content here so this one second is the slp so why we start with slp okay the very first thing is why we start with the slp module okay so when we say like slp module okay so overview let me click on this overview here or you want me to quickly have the assessment also let's quick have a quick assessment for the module 1 okay let me quickly open it so it's a small questionnaires are there this will just uh, from the introduction perspective yeah uh, should i make it bigger or is it visible to everyone sorry i think this is too much big okay yeah one by one yeah here okay i hope uh, it's uh, visible okay right like the uh, screen Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now, here from the way. So, first of all, understand, guys. Like, see, you all are learning. Even see, if I say like today, even I'm Ariba. Like, I have almost fourteen years of age, but still, I'm learning. Okay. So, please do not hesitate. Everything is little new. Even Ariba is introducing lot of new features in Ariba itself on a quite a like on a regular basis. So, the learning never stops. even um, i am also learning lot of things from the like still right so no need to hesitate you can give a wrong answer and all you already you guys are new on the ariba platform so there's nothing need to worry about it okay just be open try to answer as much as possible try to understand the things okay so first which of the following option will be digitally transformed by sap ariba one of the above d Okay. Okay. Yeah. All of the above. D. Yeah. All of the above. So as you can see, like Ariba has the uh, what you can say, like they have all the modules, like procurement, contract management, sourcing, and all. So from that perspective, digital transformation projects can be implemented for all this above. Right. So digital transformation. I hope, like, so as you know, right, digital transformation is nothing but where you will be putting up some system which is been electronic or doing the things on automated basis on them. Right. so that is more on a digital transformation facet so as ariba is from that perspective as i mentioned right if you want to improve your process you can use that if you want to have some issues in a particular uh, process only like for example negotiation or you having an issue with the contract management you have issues with only with the uh, you can say uh, uh, in your uh, pr to po process so from all this perspective you can have the individual module also so they can have it segregated based on that one so you can perform in all it if you are having only with the contract management you can buy the contract management module you are looking for procurement you can buy the p2p side you having something more on the supply chain side like you want to improve the process you want to have some more on a sourcing perspective something like that then you can do this so yes ariba can support your all the above requirements okay now what kind of sap ariba is a company to b b2b right so business to business we are directly dealing with this one so b2b now here you can see 
the data that can be integrated from various ERP solutions to Ariba processes. Both Spline and platform. B. A and B. Right, right. Okay, so both A and B, master and data. So generally in Ariba, when you refer it, so we generally refer to the two data. Like, so for example, if you refer to the master data, so what is the master data? An example is like, you can say like your company codes, your, uh, uh, you can say your uh, cost center, GL, plants, all those things are sometimes like, uh, cost center is even not well, but like your company codes, purchasing orgs, GL, uh, these things are coming under the master data. Okay, and traditional data is your like, all this your PR to PO process, what you are performing in there. So all these things will be there. So these things are, like as you know, right, ERP systems are there and then they are flowing these things. Okay, I think I haven't showed you one thing in here. Wait a second. Uh, quickly, let me show you this one. Yeah, yeah I think, uh, sorry, I missed this one. It was there in this one, here. So just let me put it in the slide. So, so this is an overview. So it's not a very like, uh, it's a, uh, something you should uh, like pinpoint on this one, but just like overview. So here, if you see this, this is a basic, architecture from a SAP product perspective it's given by that okay but you can take this one in this manner so this is you can see these are our modules Ariba sourcing contract management and all so just refer briefly and this is something more on a you can say like downstream side by uh, buying an invoice okay so you can see this this is Ariba this is what we are going to cover okay this Ariba is going to be integrated via this middleware with any ERP. So currently here in the diagram, it's just for the reference, it's showing your SAP products, all your SAP products, right? But this Ariba system is integrated with this ERP system via this middleware. And remember, this middleware could be any. It's not mandatory to go for CIG. It's people generally go for CIG because like, CA, uh, like you have both side your ERP systems as Ariba, like so SAP products. So generally it's better to go for the CIG because SAP CIG uh, provides some basic uh, configurations already from the HANA, like whatever the ERP tools of SAP already are there. So it's easy to integrate also. Okay. But in case if you are going for something, so you can have middleware system, something different also. In market, you can see like IPAS is there, Bell Boom is there, or there are multiple middleware systems are available. It's just that you need to have a little bit more effort on that to map the, to integrate the systems. Okay. So these things can be changed. It's not like very hard and fast that you should be always CIG. And same way, this ERP system can be changed. Like you can have your PeopleSoft, Oracle, any other system. Okay. But yes, if it's an SAP tool, then definitely it's easy to integrate because SAP design. So every, see, this is very basic that every custom, every company who's designing something their own, they will definitely design in a manner that they can integrate with their systems easily. Right. So these are all SAP systems here, the ERP systems here, and these are also ERP, Ariba system, sorry, SAP system and SAP itself designed a CIG. So these things are basic that they will be designing something which is more easy to in integrate when their own systems are in place. Okay, so this is how you will be able to see these information. This is how the data basically connects or like your system get connected. Now, here you can see this Ariba Jay. network. Yes, please. Yeah, so Jay, I have a question on uh, CIG. In CIG, uh, means we will do only integration part or do we need to do any mapping fields like that? So if we use the PIP, we need to do the mapping, right? So same way, do we have in CIG as well? Yes, yes, we have the CIG mapping is there in the CIG. Okay, okay. okay. So I will be showing you that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I will be showing you that. Video. So that's it. So some mappings are by default. So standard, like basically custom mapping are there and they are standard mm -hmm. mapping. So mm -hmm. I will be showing you some brief from that perspective in the CIG when we discuss the okay. CIG. Okay. Now here you can see this, this is your Ariba network. So you can see this suppliers, all the communications happens to the suppliers will be via Ariba network. Okay, so this is what it is like Ariba network is there in the place and you are communicating anything from the suppliers. So it will be always with the via the Ariba network. Okay, so this is what, as I said, right? See Ariba network plays a very important, right? It's like, as I gave you the example, right? 
you want to communicate to any other person via mobile so you need to dial some number and it the call get connected via the network of any particular cellular mobile network right i tell idea like that way so same way ariba network also maintain that and this is like completely maintained by ariba itself they give us a peak like there's an another access of ariba by our network we call that one so from that you can get a little peak on it so there are some uh, things are there they can change it but this is how the suppliers whenever you are sending any document so there are some information which goes to the supplier via a and ids and all they get a unique number so i will be explaining that when we create this slp right under the slp and all you will be finding out how these things works in it okay so i will be showing you that process but this is the overall so why i want to show you like this is the overall architecture now brief if you understand how the ariba where the ariba stands where the middleware stands how the erps are there how the suppliers are there so this is a basic just to understand that how and where the systems are placed when you are trying to connect with something else okay so this is how it is jay what is ariba supplier risk so supply risk is also another module where you will be having a particular set of questionnaires and also where you analyze the supplier that this will be supplier is a, a very good for example if we say like to have a good supplier you need to follow all the rules and regulation like you need to have the certification of uh, fire and safety you need to follow the osas iso certificate and all based on that you can set up some ranking and all and you can set up the score that if the supplier does not have this one it will be little less and if the supplier has this one it will be having a better ranking so you will be like communicating that okay so that is more on that perspective so nowadays like see basically if i say like major part is been covered in the slp risk part is used but not to a that extent if i say okay so this is how it is so a lot of things are there if you see the like the supply chain collaboration is there that is a separate thing if you see in the market there are some other uh, modules also of there ariba so if you see frankly speaking if you go for all the modules of ariba and all right it will like it will take uh, almost a year to complete some trainings <laughs> there are a lot of things which is ariba introduce ariba like trying to introduce new new modules itself like earlier was there was uh, some uh, guide buying and now they are also including guided sourcing okay so they are enhancing their capability bringing new modules on a regular basis but the baseline if you can say the basic or the basic you can say uh, the crux of all these things will be generally covered by this okay yes definitely they are bringing something new and all but these are some like you can say the core if you see in the market right 90% of the clients are dealing with these these modules the one that we have decided the course content we have decided the course content based on that that 90% of the market these people the companies are using these modules okay so that's how we have like uh, had a discussion and then we have finalized this course content on it okay fair enough i think this part is little clear like just want to show you like brief idea on this one everyone is okay any doubts any questions so do we have interlink between upstream and downstream uh, so few of the clients will take only downstream and few of them will take upstream so right. how... so basically when your upstream and downstreams are uh, connected so we generally the, the name and the wording that we use is the suit integrated so basically your upstream and downstreams are connected so yes if you, uh, these things are connected like you can create the contract management downstream and upstreams are there so you will get to know like when i create this one right so you will be getting all this information that how we are using the upstream and downstream in the connection okay so that thing will be coming so yes these are connected wherever it is you go for example like if i give an example of contact management so as i said right contact management is mix of upstream and downstream and when i will be showing you that contract management while creating all these things right so from the contract workspace you will be creating a contract terms within that one so it's kind of linked here but it's little uh, you can say not complicated very much but like yeah it's a little complicated when i show you in the system you will get to know like how these things are connected and how you can use this ones okay okay yeah uh, one more question uh, yeah. you said that there is a dedicated support team uh, uh, from the client right so as a consultant from the tcs uh, do we get that uh, 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 
access to us as well uh, you are referring to a uh, service D request to raise the service request you told that there is a dedicated support uh, yes yeah, so dsc right you are referring uh, to this dsc right uh, yes yeah so basically what happens is generally uh, when you are working on that any implementation project so client generally get you the access of dsc also so they generally what they should either they uh, give you one uh, access for this only they get your name also to the ariba that you guys uh, they add you as a dsc in their uh, database and you have the credentials for that and you can raise the cases and you can communicate with the supplier also sorry uh, with the ariba customer support also okay or sometimes basically what happens is like see uh, ds before the go live even after go live you have this hypercare i think ariba provides 3 weeks hypercare i'm still like this is the some old uh, like i have one year before i'm not sure if they have increased it but generally they provide for 3 to 4 weeks of hypercare in that one basically like after the go live if any issues are coming in the system like you can directly connect with them and they will support you so this dsc that basically like sr and the case creation comes into the picture after the hyper care is over okay actually uh, our project is support uh, j actually uh. okay 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 no problem so no problem so yeah so so in the support so basically yes then you will be having like you can ask any request for this one like we will be having either a dsc or they will give you like so they will make you a dsc in that one you will be able to raise the service request or you can say open now there is a case we refer it so you can open a case with the sap ariba so customer should actually uh, like initiate this one and they should give you this access otherwise like uh, you need to reach out to the customer someone representative and you need to ask them please raise this uh, please raise a case or open an sr these are the information so when you raise a case right so you need to have fill the realm name what are the issues and all uh, like recreation methods can you replicate the issue uh, steps to reproduce lot of information you need to fill it up in here so if they are okay with that one that is up to them but if not so they need to provide you the access so that you can fill it up the, those information okay yeah jay and uh, what is the response time from you know uh, sap on that sr okay <laughs> i will say like it's a good question because if you have not taken the premier service like there is a premier service uh, for which you need to pay for the support ariba support right if you are not taking the uh, premier service from the ariba support and in that scenario if you are using the tickets so p1 p2 having the sla like they respond like for p1 they re immediately respond within 2 hours so p1 generally you raise when for example like your entire system is down you are not able to do anything right in that scenario you can raise a p1 ticket and uh, in that case they will even give you a call also like directly call you will get a support and uh, uh, it will be generally in the case where you are not able, so they will ask either the whole uh, all the end users are impacted your whole system is down something like that if that is the case then only you will raise a p1 if you can say like the um, your major disruption happening so for example your one module is completely down mm -hmm. then you can raise a p2 or even p1 also can be raised in that scenario so p1 p2 are in the case of very critical ariba respond that within like couple of hours and all they generally do that in the p1 p2 cases like, but you know the client has to take this premium uh, support Back, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. They need to pay for some amount, and like I think this needs to be negotiated with the uh, support, and then they get the premium support. So they reply immediately on that one. Otherwise, for P3 and P4, the four categories are there: P1, P2, and P3, P4. For P3 and P4, Ariba do not have any SLA. They will respond as per their own convenience. Frankly speaking, like you need to send multiple reminders to them, and once they get a chance, so they will reply on that. so that is how the p3p4 works so generally if you are a, like you can suggest the customer if you are working on a critical projects and all something like that so then it's better to take a premium service if not then it will be little uh, like it takes some time like the ariba respond to any request on it frankly speaking like this is my experience i have seen it okay okay yeah so this is how it works so do we is have limit uh, standard sorry sorry i missed it i think uh, can you please repeat it so is there any uh, standard template for uh, raising this sr uh, or uh, you can provide all the information in general in a in an email uh, there is no like i 
I think there is a standard. You can say like the, like when you open this, right? Open a case, create a case. So there are four or five fields that you need to fill it up. Like first, I think first is the realm. The second is like production realm. The issue is from the production realm or test realm. And then you need to search something like the description of the item, uh, like the error, description of the error. And uh, then it comes like uh, you will be pulling some, uh, if you can reproduce the steps to reproduce. And then I think in the fourth, it comes as an attachment. Like you need to attach something in there. Any screenshots are there and all. So you can attach it and then you can submit it. Like after that, you need to just check something. And so it's easy. Like, isn't it? So as of now, like, see, as I said, I see, I do not have DSC access as of now for this one. So if you have it so that you can show it. Otherwise, uh, if you find, I think, uh, I'm not sure. Like, uh, is anyone from the Zarin Tech support team? Anyone from the Zarin Tech? Uh, okay, not sure. So maybe like, uh, I'm not sure, like I can open the Google right now. Like these are some, uh, what you can say, uh, some, uh, uh, what you can say this. Uh, this Akshay from yeah. yeah, yeah, Akshay. Yeah. Can I open uh, Google and uh, show something from that side? Is it okay? Uh, fine, sir. Until it's uh, corporated content, you can show them. Uh, corporate, like it's just something, I'll try to find out something like, I'm not sure if the will be. So like, uh, Ariba connect uh, case. Uh, sorry, Jay, what, what exactly we're looking for? Like, uh, like the question being asked, right? So, how the uh, the page, like, what are the information needs to put on the Ariba connect when you are raising a case in there? So, yeah. so if you have something, so like maybe you can share internally because yeah. I, I will be searching on something on Google only, right? Yeah. Uh, so, all participant from TCS, right? Uh, yes, I think everyone is from TCS. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Uday. Let's yeah. So this is no, this is like a normal uh, SAP support ticket. So okay. So but uh, Ariba have uh, uh, Ariba have a different portal that is a uh, connect.ariba.com. So from here we can raise the cases. So if we want to reach out any SAP like normal ECC or FICO, we use normally uh, SAP support, right? The same way uh, for Ariba we have a Ariba Connect. So like uh, this is the way we have. Raise the cases. Okay. So same same information which we uh, we supposed to use in the SAP support. Same way we can use this. Mm -hmm. So they will respond on that. Uh, the actually we have a uh, one more feature here is in Ariba Connect. If you raise any case, it will send an email. From the email itself also we can respond. It will update directly into the uh, in your ticket. Okay, this is the case. Means here we can call it as a case. Earlier it's supposed to be service request. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Now they have changed to the cases. Mm -hmm. Right, Jay? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Yeah. Earlier it's supposed to be yes, sir. We call them as a service request earlier. Now we are calling it as a Nariba. It is a cases. If we want to create any case, we can use a create case. And uh, uh, so we need to fill all the details same way like SAP support. What is the issue and uh, everything? But here the thing is we no need to provide any connections because of it is a cloud. So Ariba itself, they have access. They can log in and they can check the issue. So we don't need to provide any connections. We don't want to open any connections. So that's the only uh, only differentiation. Other than that, everything is same. Is it fine? Anyone has have any questions or can I stop? Yeah, thanks. Uday. You can stop. Yeah. I think. Thank you. Yeah, please go ahead. Jay. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So yeah, so as uh, like uh, Uday shared, right? So this one, so this is how it looks and uh, this is how you will be able to uh, like raise a tickets or like open a case with the SAP Ariba. So this is the like access, right? So once you are working on a customer side, so they will be providing you this access. So they generally need to provide this access. Then only it will like uh, you will be able to otherwise someone from the 
client side like you need to provide the information they will do that okay so i think uh, that's all so i hope that is clear right so now let's back to this one uh, some uh, basic uh, questionnaires in here so third one i think we have discussed master and the transactional data okay now let's see here okay so yeah uh, jay yes please yes please yeah the third question the why the fourth option is incorrect the vendor data okay so vendor data is basically like you are receiving something like you are not integrated in something so basically integration when we refer to the integration perspective right you are connecting and sending all this information to the supplier also but basically what we are doing when we are doing the integration right we are receiving only like the way we receive rfps right so when we are having the vendor data in here so we are receiving the data from you are not sending any your for example you have received the vendor data you created the vendor in your ariba system you created a vendor id so that vendor id will be will be unique to your company only right that's unique id that you have created in your like generally we refer right so that will not be sent back to the yeah. supplier Right. Look, yeah. So it will be in yeah, yeah, ERP ID. You can say ERP yes. ID. So that ID you will not be sending back to the supplier because it's not useful for him, right? They will be having something A and ID to communicate anything, and they cannot use that ID apart from you. So we do not transfer the data something to that. We receive it. For example, you need ISO certificate of the supplier. You need some questionnaire. You will be asking. So I will be showing like you need to ask some questions to the supplier. Are you a manufacturer? You have this. Uh, uh you have this certificate or not how many customers you have and all so those kind of information you will be just fetching from the supplier you are asking from the supplier you are not sending something to the supplier from that perspective right you will be sending only the invitations and all so if you see that this is when we say integrated generally the integration is basically like you are communicating continuously with that you are run you are moving your data as master data transactional data all these things are communicating on a regular basis which is we are not doing with generally with our vendor right whenever we need something we ask them they provide that we generally never send our even you see when i will be showing you this one we only even uh, share the content part either as an rfi rfp or slp anything is there we only share them the content part of it they need to respond to that one and the content is also very specific the way we want so it's it's little different from the integration if you see like integration is like i meant right so here you, itself is like saying master data and transaction so integration is you are communicating with the customer so with the other system that's why it's not integrated i hope is it clear okay. yeah but yeah. in these cases when the supplier details are already there in the s4 on our ecc and we are implementing a new system called ariba Right. We need the supplier uh, details, so we are not going to register the supplier again. We will just create the ID only if the supplier is not there on the Ariba network. But uh, we fetch all the details of the supplier from the ER. Yes, yes. So see, like if you are referring to the integration perspective, so then in that case, your source of two system becomes a ERP. So you will be fed. So as I said, right? See, SLP when we are communicating the SLP integration, the data is bidirectional. Okay, so bidirectional in the sense, like in case you are having some supplier-related information from the ERP side, so you can push from the ERP to the Ariba side. That is bidirectional. Or in case, in case if you are not having the integrated or you are having a source of truth, your Ariba system, you have first onboarded the supplier on the Ariba platform via SLP. Now, once the supplier is created on the SLP side, now you are going to push that SLP supplier uh, to the ERP side. Okay, so in that scenario, you will be pushing right. all this data. Yeah, and okay, and if the supplier is an old supplier, so mm -hmm. we have to in integrate in, in in those cases we have to integrate this our Ariba solution to the ERP, and we can transfer data to the ERP. We can fetch the data uh, from the ERP to the Ariba. Yes, yes, ERP to Ariba, you can fetch it. You can fetch the data from the ERP. You need to run the master data and from the direct connectivity and all. So, so your data, yeah. That means that the, the, the data can be integrated from the ERP to the Ariba. The vendor data also can uh, be integrated from the ERP to the Ariba. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Wait a second. See here. See this vendor data, which is we are referring here, right? So this is basically when we are fetching something from the third party vendor directly. This is that the I think the reference we are talking about here is that is a ERP solution. 
So if something is there in your ERP, that is we are not fetching something from vendor. That is already there in our ERP system. So ERP system sending to Ariba or what is something which is already there in Ariba, we are sending to ERP. So there's no vendor in that. Okay. We are talking. So this option is referring to something that which we are directly fetching or sending to ERP to vendor. Okay. Understand okay. the difference. Okay. Okay. So this thing uh, is. I, 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 yeah. You got I, the point? I understood it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is so okay. See here, yeah, the master okay. data vendor is also sometimes like so vendor also considered as a master data, right? We also can sometimes right. consider as a, yeah. So in that case, so we are fetching. So we are fetching the data if we are sending something which is already like for example, you have already one thousand suppliers in Ariba. Sorry, in ERP system already you have registered like old way, right? Now you want now you bought Ariba. Right. Now you want to send this data of the uh, ERP system to the Ariba system because now we will be creating the PRP in the Ariba system. So that is basically that is not a <laughs> this vendor data transfer. This is a our internal ERP to Ariba transfer, right? So that's why it is that is this is why it is these two options are correct. This one is for the external vendor when we are communicating directly to the vendor. So I will be showing you like so SLP side I will be communicating those part only that part only like right? how you will be onboarding a supplier in Ariba. Okay, so that I will be showing you here in the SLP. Now, here SAP Ariba is a cloud-based innovation solution that <laughs> allows. Yeah, sorry. Both A and B. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, that's fine. So, okay, SAP Ariba is a cloud-based innovation solution that allows Dash to connect and do business on a single platform. So, supplier and buyer, both mm -hmm. A and B, right? Correct, absolutely. Okay. So, I think here, yeah. SAP Ariba enhanced saving through complete coverage for all spend and expense types. So, which one? B. Direct and indirect. SAP Ariba enhanced. So, yes. So all of the above. Yeah, so basically what happens is like here you can have it all of the above, but in this one basically like different different systems will involve for direct procurement, indirect procurement, services, capital project, contingent labor. So these are like basically involving like others. So for example, if I give you an example, there is a related to the bill of materials and all those things comes to from the direct material side, right? There is an other product sourcing is there. There is a like uh, you can you heard of like right. commerce automation and all those things, right? Those things also come into the picture. So Ariba has a lot of solutions from the different different customer perspective. It's you need to identify or the customer needs to identify what they are looking for. Okay, so yes, so you can say like the Ariba has the features and the functionality which works from a different. So people use it in a different different manner. If I frankly speaking, people can use the indirect procurement of some of the auction. Like for example, you go on to conduct an auction. Generally, from the indirect procurement, what is an indirect procurement? If you give an example of what is an indirect material. In case of indirect, uh, so any any example, uh, any any example for indirect procurement. Anyone can suggest me something on the indirect procurement example. Any material for the indirect procurement? Procurement of stationery. Any? Yeah, yeah. Procurement of stationery or something, right? So you will be, for example, let's take an, uh, or we will say like a coffee vending machine. You want to have like like ten floor of your office. You want to buy a bulk of some fifty coffee vending machine that you will be placing on each floor, right? That's an indirect procurement, right? But so you will, what you will be doing, you can use auction for it. Okay, sourcing auctions where they, you can, and you can negotiate this. But companies sometimes use even some direct material on for the auction. Okay, whereas generally we refer always that the indirect procurement will be taken care of more on the Ariba platform. From the generally the modules that we are covering our in this one, majorly focused from the indirect procurement perspective. But as I said, right, everyone, like you know that the customers are this way, they sometimes try to twist the system or try to use something in a different manner. So they do for the procurement of direct materials also via the this process. So it's nothing wrong in it. Basically, it's just like like it's more better if you use something different. But yes, if you want to do an auction, you can also do other direct. For example, I, I give you an example like last time there was some iron ore machinery like for this was for uh, automobile industry. They uh, make the castings. So there every month they need this iron ore for making the castings. So they have done the auction for that. Okay, so this is how the customer work on it. So yes, in this perspective, you can do this one. 
you can suggest like these things you can suggest to the customer also if you want to use this way you can use this way also okay so sometimes these things are just you need to present in front of when you are initially going with this one like customer will ask you these kind of question can we take this one this way we want to have this uh, this kind of uh, a negotiation in this one or we want to have perform this contract in this manner and all can you perform this one so these are the things yes we can do it and we need to present in front of them and we can do yes you can still like have a little uh, twisting in this one and you can use this way also like this is nothing illegal or something non ethical in it but yeah it is better to follow the process but yes if you want to use it it can be used okay so we have this rnr print saving so because auctions is the one of the thing where you can get the immediate saving i'm telling you like uh, clients from the indian market rather than from the foreign market foreign market is more uh, looking from the process perspective to improve the process and all those perspective rather than indian market customers are more looking from the uh, commercial perspective so immediate results of savings and immediate results on the uh, realization of the savings and all so from this perspective generally we need to suggest some of the times that you can go for auctions okay fair enough okay uh, during which year sap ariva was founded so i'm i'm 96 also, 96 right so i'm also not sure frankly speaking like i i have maybe i think i 70 i was not having sure okay 1996 okay so as you know right ariva was initially it was a stand alone system ariva was mm -hmm. another company separate organization because sap is a german right ariva was initially in a uh, american uh, organization so mm -hmm. sap later on in system procured okay now okay mm -hmm. sap ariva improves the overall vendor management system of an organization okay so you can say like yeah both and we can say like less costly ways of procurement making business simple so these are like having lot of options and lot of uh, you can say like the uh, aspects different answers can be there for this one because it impacts in a lot of manner vendor management and all those things it impacts in a lot of manner okay now select the option that are included in the previous ariba acquisitions from the following b2b network b process free market agile software redex all of the above so okay so i'll i'll uh, i think this is the okay eighth so i'm uh, any any uh, suggestion on this one see frankly speaking like i'm also <laughs> this one i have uh, not seen this questionnaire so i haven't uh, worked on this but uh, electronic invoicing and b2b network is there but uh, free market and procuring i'm not aware of this one also so any idea of any one of you no so i think mostly we can say like this one i'm not sure like agile software and all these tradex is using the same acquisition process but yes if it is there so you can use it so these are more on a process perspective maybe you can find it out let me know like as i said right see i'm also learning i'm not a very uh, like i can say i'm each and everything because things are changing every day so if anyone just help me out to understand this one also so like all these uh, softwares also and so this one i'm sure these things are there but these things also you can just let me know okay now let's move to the other one choose the sap ariba network from the following okay so direct vendor merchandiser indirect vendor merchant labor and services so which one all of them we we do it for like either it's a direct vendor indirect vendor or we are doing material or services anything so we are always sending every information we are connecting everything for the vendor on this one okay vendor or merchandise so this is all of the above okay then state whether the given statement is true or false true correct okay yes so because yes we okay. can connect we can directly connect with ariba network with a million of suppliers so yes we can directly have the business needs and managing the supplier so yes we can do that and this is just one this is the one part from the ariba network i can also say like there is another part of ariba discovery 
Okay, so we'll be covering up in our training session also. There's an Aribat discovery where you have the database of the suppliers that can be used in case if you require something and all. So there are a lot of suppliers are uh, registered on that Aribat network. Sorry, Aribat discovery, and uh, some people are use that one also. Okay, so we'll we'll cover in our training that part also will be covered in our training. It's there in the content. Okay. Okay, so. Okay, so here I think oh the answer is also given in this one. No, I didn't see this. Okay, so I think you will be having this one. So this is more from your perspective. So you can practice. You can go through with this one. Okay, once you have the access, I think uh, our tech support team will definitely provide you the access after the session, and you can go ahead with this one. Okay, so okay. that's for the module first. Okay, let me go back to open the module two. Okay, overview of SLP right here. So this is assessment. We'll discuss it later. Let me start with the topic one. Okay, overview of SLP. So let me open this. Okay, so let's discuss this one. Overview of the SLP in here. So clicking in here. So presentation again. That these are some disclaimers. Okay. So please follow them. Okay. These are all these things in this one. Like image reference, all for information purpose only. There's nothing uh, like uh, having copyright and all. So managing that part. Coming to the next agenda introduction of SLP, need your SLP, what is the SLP deliver and all. So those things I will be explaining in here. So Ariba SLP provides your ability to self-managing your bank information, company address, details, other relevant information. So all these information you can gather from the supplier via the SLP process. Okay. So all why who need to use SLP supplier needs to use SLP to maintain their own data. Existing supplier will be required to complete initial setup. So basically, like need SLP. So rather than more on a supplier perspective, we can say like it is more benefitable from our perspective as a customer, as a buyer, you can say, because buyer need to have the all the details of the supplier to you can say like to authenticate anyone. So wait, in the market, you will see that a lot of suppliers are there, right? How you authenticate a supplier? Just by name or just by from the website, you will not see, right? Because every day new suppliers are coming and a lot of suppliers are not very good, right? They have some back, uh, blacklisted from some other companies and all. They have some issues with the other companies also. So what you use is you try to do your due diligence before adding that supplier in your Ariba network or you can say Ariba database. Okay. So from that perspective, you need to have like a lot of, for example, if I give you an example, if you go in a normal way, if you normal way, if you want to buy, for example, if you want to buy a laptop or a mobile, just take an example. What you will do? You will go into the market. You will check for some shops. So if you want to buy some general product, you will go for some authorized sale, right? Who's the authorized retailer or something? You cannot buy something just from the like corner of the road, right? Any shop is there who's providing you laptop and all. They are not. You are not sure whether they are correct or not. They are providing the general products or not, right? So you do your due diligence whenever you are buying anything. The same thing applies here in this one. When you are using this SLP. You need to have something like a proper documentation. So this SLP supports you this way that you can buy a, like you can ask the particular set of questionnaire. You can ask the particular set of uh, uh, documents which you are looking for. OK, so this is basically specific to the uh, requirement of the buyer customer. Basically, you can say what you want to check the so generally what happens is if I give you an example, like people create a go no go criteria. People create a go no go criteria. So they keep some standard set of questionnaires, which has been like prepared by the vendor team or where supplier management team. They like after analysis and all they put like these are the particular questionnaires when the supplier answers to these and they provide these information. Then only we are going to accept, accept that supplier in our database. OK, so these are some process that you need to define the same process. You need to map as a questionnaires into the SLP. OK, so that is where we comes the supplier request and registration. 
okay these are the two major part of it so there uh, this is where you will be coming into the picture you are putting all these things into the system okay so this is how we use for the slp so if you see i will be showing you both the aspects right so, uh, like if you not using slp also so just be there like if you are not using slp still you can use the supplies it's not like if you are not using slp how the supplies will be coming into the system right for example some company just using the sourcing module they do not need slp they are not dealing into very common uh, like uh, they are into simple fmcg products right like daily use of shampoo and maggies and all those things right they do not need any supplier who's like having very they are dealing with the retailers so they do not need anything on a specific side for that side okay any uh, complicated uh, documentation or something they they don't need it so in that scenario what will happen is they will not use us okay most probably like that is that is an assumption right so in that scenario what will happen is you still have to onboard the supplier you need to still have the suppliers in your system so how you do that so there's an another way of doing that i will be showing you that also so but understand the perspective from all like if you are using slp then how you will be loading the suppliers and how what exactly you are trying to achieve with the slp okay so as it will provide the benefits for the western power both western power and uh, and its suppliers improve efficiency in data maintenance visibility of expiring information electronic email notification supplier data quality reduce western power supplier carbon footprint less paper being used ability to utilize the reverse system electronic so all these informations so majorly all the electronic first of all all these things are like uh, electronic you just need to have nothing to print simply like nothing to print if anything required from the supplier side supplier can simply attach it as a file and send it to you you need to just download it or if you, even though if you do not want to download just be there in that system okay the data will always be there in the system okay so this is how the slp deliver and all these things will be helpful key capabilities integration with sap every year procurement consistently through the uh, source to pay process maintaining like portals of the riba network supplier also is there so there is another portal of the supplier which suppliers can access and supplier can log in okay qualification segmentation workflows we can set it up on this one so these things also be there if any response is coming from the supplier we can set up the approval flow on that okay so these are some basic of overview you can say this from the uh, overview of slp okay so if i go back uh, to the this one here mm, okay so this is the supplier request so before i before this i want to uh, i want to say this is okay let me take this one slp supplier request okay so this part is clear i think basic of slp is clear anyone have any doubts in this one any questions on this one so uh, the uh, we have said in that slide uh, jay that slp is used by the suppliers but it is actually the uh, company uh, who is using the SAP, uh, slp isn't it because yes, yes, they, yes. the job of the supplier is to just fill that information form provide the certificates iis etc but then eventually it's the company is going to validate those so the slp is being used by the company or the vendor or the bo or, or both of them no no so okay so slp is being used by company only right mm -hmm. but it's yeah. kind of linked whenever you are sending any request right so it mm -hmm. for example when you are onboarding a supplier okay it will mm -hmm. be sending a link to register them on the ariva network that is also like you can say like a supplier network so mm -hmm. slp is part of our side only okay, okay. but it's kind of linked with the suppliers uh, you can say the supplier portal also so the supplier portal if i say here right for any supplier in the market in the world okay they are using this standard url for supplier to log in on ariba portal ariba net ariba supplier portal this is basic url ariba support sorry supplier.ariba.com supplier.ariba.com if you search on the google like https comes in the in front of it otherwise this is the standard url okay 
So if you click in here, see this supplier login. This is the page. Okay. So kind of what happens is when I'm going to like, I will be performing. So what, how we will be performing is like, I will be adding all of you guys as a supplier because I will be, and then please save your, like you will be setting up of your, this test account. This is a test account. Okay. And I will be requesting everyone to use your email ID, like which do not have an earlier, already an earlier account. Otherwise it will be like little mix and all those things, right? It will create like that kind of a little issue in that one. So please do not uh, like use that one. Okay. So that perspective. So what will happen is then you will be like in, as I said, like this will be a more of a workshop. So you will be filling up the information. I will be receiving that information. So I will be showing you how that sub, the complete cycle works, like how I'm going to start the supply request from my side and how you guys going to register on the Ariba network as a supplier. And then you are going to respond to a particular questionnaires that I'm sending. So that will be required at that level as well as that will be required in future. Also that once you will be doing this RFIs, RFPs, auctions, uh, contract negotiation. So in that perspective, this also be required and will be used. Okay. So this is more of a workshop training. So um, that I will be requesting you to have this one. So this is like, this is what I'm referring it. So this is a, you can see this register now. So as a supplier, anywhere in the world, if you are using this one, you will be using this standard URL for all the suppliers. Then they will be logging in here and they will be registering in here. Okay. So there are two things. One is you can see this, this is buyer portal. Okay. So please do not get confused here between the buyer and supplier. Now we are talking about two portals. Okay, this is buyer. This is our. Okay, as a company, we are bought this one, and this is supplier put. But remember, like, for example, if I take an example like Dell, okay, Dell laptop, uh, like uh, Lenovo, and all these people are providing the laptops. Okay, in the market, these are company, but and they have the supplier. Who's the supplier for them? Intel. Intel itself is a big organization, right? But they can be supplier to the Dell. Even though Intel is quite big from that perspective. So Dell is a company and Intel can be the supplier for chips for the laptops. Same way it's using this here. Any company who's using this one, it's like they can be having buyer also. They can be having supplier, but for the supplier portal, they need to have a separate portal. Okay. So any communications will be happening, will be there with this supplier portal. So if you guys will be getting this one, so you will be always using this supplier.ariba. Mm -hmm. So like from the Google, you can just search it supplier.ariba.com. It will open you this first page and it will come in here like this. So this is standard. Like so Ariba has made it a little simpler to the supplier perspective that simple URL is there to use. So this is supplier and this is our buyer side. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> okay. Let me see this in here. What is there? Okay. So, okay. Now let me give you like when we do this. So in the SLP side, if I go for SLP side, right? So let me put it here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay. Maybe a little bit bigger. So when we talk about the SLP, right? So SLP, the supply request, the first, first thing we'll be doing is the supply request. Now, so why, okay. So first of all, why they're using SLP? Because whenever you are working on anything, right? You need two people, right? When you are want to buy something, you want to sell something. What we are doing here is buying and selling. So if what you need, you need a buyer and a supplier. That's why we picked up the first. So buyer we have, now we are looking for the supplier. So that's why we are using first. We are initiating like we are starting with the SLP first. Let the let our system have some buyers, so even though like it's already there. But like take an example, like let's have some buyers for sorry suppliers first. We'll be using those suppliers to do the business. So when we talk about the SLP, the first thing comes is the supplier request. Sorry. Okay, the supplier request. 
supplier request is an internal process. Okay, it's an internal process, generally. Right? Internal process in the sense, right? For example, take an example. Okay, like if anyone is there who can give me an example, like if anyone has been dealt with any kind of procurement activity, anyone. So generally how the oh, like the way you you communicate with the supplier, you like onboard the supplier, you find out some supplier in the market. So for example, you went some uh, uh, some exhibition and all, there you find out some supplier. And uh, so how, how you generally work with them? Like if you want to initiate something with him, so any example, like it's nothing I'm asking to very pinpoint a brief overview on that one. Anyone can give me any example? Basic idea, like nothing specific on this one. So any basic process we follow. Call the uh, supplier initially and uh, take the information. Mention your requirement to him. Right, right. And gather, gather details like uh, maybe from uh, various resources, internet, etc. about his credibility. Right, correct, correct, right. So absolutely, like that is fine, that is fine, that is correct. So in this process, what you can say, like the internal process. So you find out first, you have met this supplier. He has given you your visiting card. You had had a quite a few minutes of discussion with him. Like he mentioned you that he deals, deals into these, these things and all. So he gave you like some basic pamphlet and all those things of your hip, right? Now, you think like after a particular period of time, after one month or all, you find out like this, we getting some similar requirement that I met a supplier in that exhibition. Now, in this scenario, what will happen is you have the basic information of that supplier, right? Yes. So basic information, like you can say the name of that person and uh, email address of that person or some basic information, like you can say like address or something like he's from Maharashtra or Gujarat or any, anywhere of the uh, India, right? That kind of thing, right? So you have the basic information. So what you will do is, so in the supply request, the, this is the basic part we cover. You will be initiating, you will be initiating the supply request. We'll say supply request, supply request. Sorry. Certification details. Yeah, so first what we do is we, we basically raise an uh, like supplier request and in this one we will be mentioning only the basic details of it and this request we will be sending you can configure it again i'm saying it you can configure this and you will be sending this information to your internal either your vendor master team or whoever team who's looking taking the decisions yes. vendor team or supplier management team who's taking the decision whether the these kind of suppliers will be um, supplier management team. Some, okay, whether this can be added in our database or this kind of supplier, whether uh, we can add it on on an initial level. Remember, this is very initial level. So that is what we do in the supplier request, mm -hmm. the very basic part. Okay, after this one, once this internal process happens, then we come to the registration process, and in registration process, we will be asking every information from the supplier okay. okay then even when we perform this supplier request you can configure in a manner that supplier even not aware that we have initiated something to add him in our Ariba database okay so this is what happens in the supplier request so let me if i show you here quickly here so on this platform when you see in here on this platform here so you can see this right hand side so as i said Whenever you need to create anything, you will be going here in this one, create, and here you can see this, uh, supplier sourcing request, sourcing project, you are not able to see anything, click on more. So sometimes everything doesn't come in here in the one place, you need to click on more, and you will see that uh, all the options will come in front of you. Now here we need to find out where supplier request, here as you can see supplier request. Click on it. Okay, let it come. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, this is your supplier request form. Okay, now. 
here just quickly go through like right? you can guys see in this one this is your supply request form okay so currently what we are doing is this is i'm showing you from a end user perspective okay remember this this is what i'm doing is this is from the end user perspective if someone asks you in the company like i got this detail please take this uh, visiting card or some basic information about this person and please add this supplier in our like start this supplier onboarding process in sl very straightforward requirement i hope like everyone is clear with the requirement you met some supplier in the market you got some basic information about it and you came in the office and you gave this information to your maybe some junior resource who's generally take care of the uh, creating of this end user activity so you will give him like please start the onboarding process of this supplier now what is that process this is that process that the first is he will be creating a supplier request here so this form he will be filling it with the supplier name supplier legal name and all these information now see see here the part from the implementation also comes into picture here now this form which you are seeing here okay this form who creates it who manages this form where it is coming all this information any idea anyone like give it a guess no issues no issues no need to worry about it right wrong answer right answer. Uh, initially we are getting this information from the supplier and uh, from the uh, you know company side like uh, i am the employee of one of the company and i'll be um, you know editing those uh, supplier information in my system uh, okay okay so this is basically see uh, this thing is internal of our internal company model okay so like uh, we still not like connected with the suppliers okay so this is this is our own system here and this all this information that we are seeing in here right it's coming from the templates mm -hmm. okay and as i mentioned initially right in the starting that who maintains the template anyone admin 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 or you can say the implementation team or okay. generally the team who hand over like the key members right generally so to whom you have given the access for configuration and all those team maintain the templates so this all this information that you are seeing in here right this is coming from the template and as a implementation partner you will be managing this one and as a implementation partner you can change each and every question so basically these are nothing but question i am referring this as a question because when you are when we will discuss the template part you will see these are like considered as a question in the template level that's why i am referring them as a question okay so these questions whatever you are seeing on this page can be uh, configured configured in the sense you do not want these questions you can delete all of them you can delete complete all of them you want some different question you can get a different question also you want to change this question so you want say like supplier name is no no i want here vendor name you can do that also but like not you actually the implementation guy or whoever handling the you can say that for english like in a more simpler manner whoever handling the template part in your company who have given the access who has the access of editing the templates so j uh, sap is providing the standard template uh, while creating the configuration right 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 absolutely okay. so i mean from ecc point of view uh, mm -hmm. i am from p2p so okay. when we create a new vendor or this particular one so mm -hmm. we have a standard one and as you said right we we, got, we are not able to change that particular supplier name that is a standard default uh, which we have in ecc but if, if we can hide this particular uh, the supplier name hidden or editable mode in the background uh, when we do the configuration part so in the same way we can do the configuration over here or entirely we can uh, remove this particular layout and we need to create a new new one uh, the supplying information the supplier name the name also can be editable in the ariba name also you can edit it yes 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 that is so you can completely change this one everything so if you do not want itself as i said right you do not want this complete all these three four options at all you can remove all this 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So these things are there in this one that you can configure these things in here. So this is what the difference is, right? So understand the difference, right? I understand your concern, like they are having a little different, but here, like the customization. So basically, that form questionnaires customization, approval flow customization, all will be a part of the implementation. Implementation team or the team who's managing the configuration all in the company, right? They can do these changes. They can manage it. So you can control this completely. You can even set the answer type. For example, if I show you here something, see this agreed payment terms. So you can make this as a question also, or you can make an answer as yes and no. So this is the benefit, right? See, generally, if you take an example of whenever you are discussing with a supplier, right? You say supplier, you say to the supplier, right? What is your payment term? What happens is generally, I'm telling you in a very layman language, what happens the supplier supplier says, sir, I generally give 90% to uh, everyone, 90, uh, advance, I generally take advance to everyone, every customer. But as you are a premium customer, you can give me on, like I can give you 30 days of uh, time. You need to pay me in 30 days after delivery. Okay, like this is, this, this is the way they talk, right? But you can say, no, we have a firm policy. We will be paying you in 60 days or 90 days. You need to choose. Okay, so you will not be negotiating. So again, he will be coming, no, no, sir, I want to pay. I cannot pay this one. You can please negotiate on 45 and all. So you do not want that. That again, to and fro discussion and all those no negotiation. So these kind of things you can see agreed. Here you can write agreed 60, 30 days payment terms. Yes or no, simple. Supplier will be choosing any one thing in here. You are not giving him an option because you have many uh, like uh, what you can say, like you have the upper, you have uh, like a lot of database and supplier generally agrees to the customer requirement unless and until the supplier itself is a very big, big one, something. Otherwise, you can ask these kind of questions. So you are trying to remove what is an ambiguity in the process. You need to discuss, you need to put it there with, right? So that kind of information you can remove if you want. Otherwise, you can still keep it open. If you want, what is your payment term? You keep it a text box like this one. These are all text box. So you, the supplier can uh, write anything in here. But this is I'm talking about from the internal perspective. So let's first discuss the internal perspective of the, the registration part. I will be explaining this more where you will be communicating with the supplier and you can set up this. one. First, we are discussing the supplier request process where I will be putting up all these information in here and you will be setting up these things as per your own requirement. So this is end user perspective, but the part of the implementation, I will be covering up also. That will be when we discuss the implementation part, then I will be showing you the templates and all, how you set up, how the approval flow works. So after the submission, approval flow will be coming in here. So how that thing comes and all. So those things I will be showing you also. So this supplier uh, request form, they will be just one and it will be like standard uh, valid across all vendors. Yes. So what happens is basically uh, at the template table, I'll be explaining you this one because Ariva has kind of a, like Ariva re- supplier request and registration process is kind of a standard. Process is a standard. You cannot change, keep changing the process for one supplier to different process and another supplier to different. But you can ask some questions. You can put some conditions on the question and you can have these questions specifically to the particular, uh, what you can say, like particular uh, supplier. So for example, you have one question for Indian customer and one is for foreign. Okay, so that kind of conditions and setup can be done in the in this form, request form. But the process perspective will always be remain same. So I will be showing. So this thing will be getting more clear once we discuss the template part. So please be like, please wait for some time. Once we discuss the template part, that thing will be more clear from the process perspective. Okay. Okay, so I think uh, we are almost uh, end of our time today. So uh, we'll continue tomorrow from this onwards. So I hope uh, like uh, on a first day, first session, I hope uh, I have cleared your doubts and uh, any questions or anything you want to any feedback, any suggestion like I should be slow or fast or something more explanatory, something more something. So I'm, I'm happy like if you can share some feedback, if you need something which can be improved in our training during uh, training time. So I can do that.
as of now no jay but uh, can, can you get the axis how, how we can as we are new to this particular ariba portal right so has you shown how to create this particular uh, title bar all the okay. stuff so okay. so we would be a little bit familiar on the particular screen how to use that particular ariba uh, portal so that uh, we can we can work around on the particular part whether we can get the access of that particular one Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think uh, for that one, I think our team is already in touch with the, I think with the, your management, I think, and uh, uh, our customer support, uh, Zarin Tech, Akshay is there, right, Akshay? Hello? Yeah, hi, Akshay. So I think uh, our support team is already in touch with and they are working on this one, okay? So I think maybe by today or tomorrow, I think you will be getting some access of this portal also. So... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So I think most probably they will, you will get the access of this one. So I think the team, uh, any update on this one, uh, Akshay, the portal, I think uh, other members are working on it, right? Uh, yes, sir. my team is working on it. Uh, they'll give me an update. Once it is done, I'll update them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys. And uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Thank you for attending the session. I hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also feel free to ask your questions in the comment section below and we will reply to them at the earliest.